lining up in a scene that we've seen repeatedly around the country. Americans lining up en masse to support the relief effort of the victims in Washington and New York. Meanwhile, inside Scott Field, feelings of patriotism abound. Americans uniting as one. Hello everybody, I'm Mark Jones. Welcome to Starkville and welcome back to college football. The first Division I game to be broadcast on ESPN since the horrific events of September the 11th. You know, college football has always been inextricably and distinctively woven into the fabric of America. Fabric that was temporarily, I add, just temporarily severed, but not irreparably, back on September the 11th. Well, today the players with mindful hearts are back on the field, competing on the gridiron of brotherhood. The fans, they have come too in support. As for us, we are here simply to document the game and perhaps weave a single thread into the diverse fabric and quilt that is the greatness and the pride of our nation. Right now, let's go down to the field and the presentation of the flag. And now, please join us in a moment of silence. And now the playing of our national anthem. Please join Bonnie Sherman. Our flag was still there and no 
As a way of saluting this great nation of ours, ladies and gentlemen, would you please join the famous Maroon Band and the players from Mississippi State University and the University of South Carolina in singing God Bless America. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Hey! The first oil filter ever made back in 1923 wasn't called an oil filter. It was called a Purilator. Today, every car on the road relies on technology pioneered by Purilator. And the same company that invented the oil filter just keeps reinventing it. So that for anyone who cares enough to change their own oil, Purilator continues to mean... Pure oil then, pure oil now, pure oil later. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. And in part by Pure Later. Pure oil now, pure oil later. And welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi. Mississippi State, number 16, getting ready to take on number 20, the South Carolina Gamecocks in an important, somewhat pivotal SEC battle. Back once again, I'm Mark Jones, joined by Mike Godfrey. So many intangibles in the equation of both teams being able to get ready. The players say they're ready to go. They're tired of hitting one another. As for the coaches, Mike, tough for them to put their thumb on the respective pulses of their teams but what does it all mean in the big picture Mark you know I'm not sure the coaches know how their teams are going to play tonight but when you look at this football game you start with defenses because both defenses are going to pressure the quarterback and really get after him from start to finish and when you start with South Carolina their quarterback Phil Petty has not thrown an interception this year. He is run ball, the, running the ball versus the blitz. I expect to see him do that. He's a very accurate passer, but he needs some help, big plays downfield by his wide receivers. On the other side, states Wayne Matkin also hasn't thrown an interception. He should benefit from a strong running game. 
And I would look for Mississippi State to get some opportunities off of the play action game because I think their running game will be effective. Yeah, so many things that could happen early in this ball game too with the respective rust of both teams. Right now, let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Well, playing under very difficult circumstances became even more difficult for South Carolina last night. Their chartered plane had mechanical problems. They weren't able to fly into Starkville until today. I spoke with offensive coordinator Skip Holtz. He said, Jimmy, it really threw us out of our rhythm, out of our routine. Coach Godfrey, I got to ask you, on the day of a game, getting on a bus, flying on a plane, getting on another bus to your hotel, that is not how you want to spend your day. South Carolina, they're concerned about it, and they should be. All right, thanks a lot, Jimmy. South Carolina, meanwhile, won the toss and they have elected to defend. They have deferred to the second half as we get set for the kickoff. Dante Walker and Pick Prey, they're back deep for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Mark, I don't think it really is gonna uh, hurt South Carolina travel plans. They got to sleep at their own hotel last night. May have been better for them. A short kickoff that comes down at the 10 yard line. That's Walker. And Dante Walker gives the Bulldogs good opening field position out to the 33-yard line. And that is where Wayne Matkin will start the reins of this Mississippi State offense. Matkin, not spectacular, but extremely efficient. Mississippi State's all-time winningest quarterback, 24 and 10 as a starter. Look at our Bud Light starting lineups. Watson, Scott, Ages, Brewer, and Spikes, the dangerous receiver. First down and 10 from the 33-yard line. Matkin to pass out of the backfield. That's Miller. Vicenzo Miller with a first down into Gamecock territory at the 46-yard line. A good block from Donald Tucker on the play. Good safe pass for Wayne Matkin to open this football game. You expect the emotions of South Carolina to be charging up the field. Good call. Get the yellow screen out to Vicenzo Miller. He picks up good blocking, good field position for State. Like a 22-yard pickup and a first down on the first play of the ball game for Mississippi State. Backs out of the eye on first and ten. Nice play fake. Matkin out of bounds. Gain maybe a yard down to the 44-yard line. Let's take a look at the offensive line for Mississippi State. Actually, South Carolina first. Wharton, Williams, Johnson, Fry, and Hall. Mississippi State, meanwhile. Their defensive line looks like that. But very, the Bulldogs very good offensive defensive line, line yeah. too, Mark. The offensive line for Mississippi State with three returning starters. Right now they have the ball second down and nine. Matkin with plenty of time. Flag down to the play, pass complete. That's Justin Jenkins, the 6-1 sophomore. Well, we'll have to wait and see if this one stands or not. A 12-yard pickup, Mike. May get a holding on Justin Griffith, the fullback. Face mask by the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. I believe it was on Justin Griffith, the fullback. Griffith, someone who's improved his blocking this year. There's a look at him. Meanwhile, the Bulldog offensive line with three returning starters from a season ago. Number 66, Tommy Watson, one of the guys with a key assignment today, Mike. Really, Mark, he has got, uh, he's a former guard that did move to center, and he's got Langston Moore, a defensive lineman, right on top of him this entire football game. Really impressed with Langston Moore. Already has two blocked field goals this season. Second down and 24 for the Bulldogs from their own 41 this time. Out of the backfield, it's incomplete, intended for Justin Jenkins. It'll be third down and 24 to go Let's take a look at the linebackers Garrison Kalimba Edwards a special talent joined by Jermaine Lemon as well and you'll see Kalimba Edwards up sometimes he'll play as a linebacker but he prefers to play down as a defensive end and rush the passer as for the secondary five DBs dog safeties the guy to watch Sheldon Brown on the corner the All-American candidate third down and 24 They set up the screen. That's Miller, got a good block. 
Miller close to the first down at the 35-yard line. Island making the tackle. Just talked about Tommy Watts in the center, and he does a nice job of coming out here and blocking. Again, they take advantage of, Mrs. of South Carolina's pursuit up the field, and they get the screen out to Desenzo Miller. You're going to see Kyle Wallace, number 75, 66, Tommy Watts with good blocks. And I'm surprised of how Mississippi State's coming out and putting the ball in Wayne Matkins' hands. Uh, I thought they'd come out and try to pound South Carolina. So I think now they're trying to loosen them up, and eventually you'll see Desenzo Miller just hammer at this defensive line. This time they line up out of the eye. Miller between the tackles. Stopped up by number 91, John Stamper, the 6'5 senior. Sparky Woods is the offensive coordinator, former head coach of South Carolina, Mark, and here he is as he calls the plays. And I think when he looked back at the Georgia film, Georgia had success with Lucy Smith, the fine tailback that they had running the ball, and I, I just think you're going to see a lot of Desenzo Miller and Dante Walker. Sparky Woods, someone who's brought a lot of balance to this Bulldog attack in the last few years. Second down and seven now for Mississippi State. Miller again. Miller plowing his way down to the 26-yard line. It'll be third down and short for Mississippi State. And as you mentioned, Mike, they go a couple of runs now in a row after taking advantage, seemingly, of some of the anticipation. South Carolina really trying to get up field quickly. You know, it's a good play-calling uh, system by Sparky Woods. He knew the emotion that the pregame held and, and everybody's waiting to play, and he took advantage of that with some screen passes. Now hammering at that defensive line. Third down and a long one to go. Gets to the fullback, Justin Griffith, and he gets the Mississippi State first down. Garrison making the stop on the play, so they go to hammer time. Yeah, it, it's hammer time for sure. And now here's where Georgia, two weeks ago, Ron Franklin, Adrian Crush, and I had that game. Georgia moved. 20s to the 20s, but when they got down here, South Carolina really stopped them, forced them to kick two field goals. They missed the field goals, so Mississippi State has to be good in this area. First down and 10. Over 25. Matkin hands it off to Miller. Spins off of one would-be tackler, finally stopped by Willie Offer. Miller, who led the team in rushing a season ago. At 108 yards rushing in their season over and against Memphis to go along with a touchdown. We talked earlier in the game about how that two-headed monster really can get teams off balance. It's good to have a second tailback like Dante Walker. He can start for most teams. Second down and seven. Miller again between the tackles down to the 18-yard line. State's a team that uh, Mark can be balanced. Uh, you look at a year ago, they averaged one more yard uh, rushing the football than they did passing, and they had that same balance in their opener against Memphis. Another third down. They face here, third and five. A five receiver set for the Bulldogs. And it's complete for the first down to Terrell Grindle, the 5'10 junior. So Mankin spreading it around a little bit, folks. Everything's safe. Screen passes, hitch passes, and run the football. Nice start for Wayne Matkin. I've been 24 and 10 as a starter, the all-time winningest quarterback. He's won more games than everybody in school history except for Don Smith. First down and 10. Miller trying to get to the edge. Vicenzo Miller down to the two-yard line. Island making a touchdown saving tackle. And he broke through the arms of Sheldon Brown. When you have a good eye tailback, you usually have a good eye fullback. Justin Griffith 
Had a good block again, number 31. But the sense on Miller shows you the power as he got around the corners and ran over South Carolina defenders. He has run five times for a total of 25 yards. They've thrown it to him twice for 46. He's the focal point of the offense so far. First and goal. Touchdown, Mississippi State. Dante Walker. So the Bulldogs cap a very precise and methodical drive with a touchdown. Walker leaping high into the air. Marlin in for the extra point. And after a 12-play, 67-yard drive, the Mississippi State Bulldogs they haven't played in 17 days, but the rust falling off in big chunks right now. We'll be right back. If the way it's made doesn't convince you, or the durability, or the safety, or the comfort, or the performance, or the way you're treated, if all that doesn't make you want to buy a Saturn, no offer will. Of course, we could be wrong. Get 0.9% APR financing on select 2002 models. For restrictions, see your retailer. One tool rack, 36 tools. Get the long handle tool rack from Rubbermaid. Police officer, get away from the girl! Even those sworn to protect can cross the line. That's what I'm talking about. Just let the animals wipe themselves out. God willing. Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke. Boom. Training day, rated R, starts October 5th. In this time of need, the American Red Cross is profoundly grateful for your generous outpouring of support. A long period of uncertainty and recovery awaits us all. Please maintain your resolve to donate blood. Call 1-800-GIVE-LIFE to schedule an appointment. And please be persistent. The need for blood will continue in these days, weeks, and months ahead. Call 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. Together, we can save a life. This message has been brought to you by New York Life. Bulldogs leading the Gamecocks seven to nothing, courtesy of a long, methodical scoring drive. Bulldogs set to kick off, and keep in mind that on that scoring drive, they overcame a 15-yard penalty too. Here's Brewer, two yards deep. They run the reverse. Alexander. Takes it out to the 27-yard line. A little razzmatazz by Lou Holtz, Mike. Trying to catch somebody out of their lane. Phil Petty, the starting quarterback, he got knocked out in the last two games against Mississippi State. Enough said. He's looking just to survive in this one, you would think. A look at the skill positions brought to you by Bud Light, Watson Scott, Ages Brewer, and Carlos Spikes. Derek Watson, the focal point of the game top attack. First down and 10 from the 26. That's Brewer. And he is brought down at the 28-yard line by Morgan. Take a look at the offensive line now for South Carolina. Wharton Williams, Johnson, Fry, and Hall. Bit of a change up front on that right side of the offensive yeah, line. Yeah, we're going to watch that. Melvin Page usually starts at the right tackle spot. He's been suspended, so we'll see how long he stays out of here. Meanwhile, those five guys will be putting a lot of pressure on quarterback Phil Petty up front. Hagan and Stevens, dangerous attacking ends. Second and eight. 
Petty fires incomplete. It'll be third and long. Not the situation they want to be in. No, and they had a bust, though. They, they really busted that play. Take a look at the lone linebacker for Mississippi State in that 5-1-5 alignment, T.J. Mawinney from Covington, Louisiana. The DBs run very well. Pick Bray, the leader back there, the All-American candidate. They'll either win or lose this game on one and one coverage because I don't think South Carolina can run the ball, so you got a lot of jump balls in this game. Long passes. Third down and eight to go for South Carolina on this. Their open drive of the ball game. And a flag down on the play. Offensive lineman moved out of his three-point stance. Five yards, still third down. The third down and about 13 to go now. Mark, South Carolina is the least penalized team in the SEC. They average 17 yards. On the other side, State is the most penalized team, averaging 91 yards in penalties in one game. Third down and 13. Jackie Sherrill in his 11th season is the Mississippi State head coach, the winningest coach in school history. Third and 13. Up top, incomplete, almost caught by number seven, Michael Ages. This is what I'm talking about. You're going to get a lot of opportunities for a pass interference, a jump ball, and, and they give it to you because they're going to blitz and they're going to be up bump and run coverage. So you got to make those opportunities connect. One of those high risk, high reward defenses. Uh, feast or famine. <laughs> Fourth down and 13. As Tyler Dean punts, and Ray Ray Bivens back from an injury. Hill at a bounce comes dead at the 33-yard line. And there's a flag down back at the 26, a 44-yard punt by Tyler Dean. Seen a few penalties by both sides so far early here in the game. Something you might expect after the long layoff. Mistakes and turnovers. See a lot of them this weekend. Holding for the defense. It's not an automatic. You get 10. You, you want to take the 10? Behind the line. 10-yard penalty. 10-yard penalty will be here. It'll be four. Nope. Confusion abounds on the field right now as now South Carolina is we'll going to take this penalty and still have a, a fourth down situation. The officials discussing matters. Yes, they will punt it again. The previous spot is not an automatic first down. It'll be fourth down again. Well, again, you talked about Mississippi State being the most penalized team in the conference. It'll be fourth down and three now as Tyler Dean will set up this time on his own 19-yard line. And Ray Bivens back deep. This punt not as good as the last one. Outs out of bounds at the 32. A 36-yard punt, nothing on the return. Folks, two Heisman Humble quarterbacks featured in an ESPN2 college football double dip. Game one, 545. It's Woody Dantzler and Clemson, number 18 against Virginia. Game two at 9 o'clock, Chris Sims, guys, number six, Texas, against their state rivals from Houston. It's college football on ESPN2. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So the Bulldogs will start off on their own 31-yard line here at Scott Field. Their second series of the ball game, they lead 7-0. This is Dante Walker in for this series. Ran into a stack of tacklers led by John Alston, number 86. Bulldogs held the ball for 524, went 67 yards the first time they had the ball. Made four yards that time near the 35. So now we get a look at Dante Walker at tailback. How are they different, Mike? 
Dante Walker's a stronger runner. I think Desenzo Miller's a good balanced runner that can go the distance. Second down and seven. Atkin with plenty of time again. Looking up top, incomplete intended for Justin Jenkins. The coverage by Island. Mark on the first drive, State all power in the running game. Opened up with uh, some screen passes, loosened up, and then Desenzo Miller with a good cutback, and then he breaks around the corner. Watch him lower his shoulder and shows you the strength on Sheldon Brown and then Dante Walker over the top. So uh, look for more of that kind of uh, game out of Mississippi State. Bulldogs now, Mike, looking at third down and seven. They're three for three so far in their third down conversions. And they do it again, complete to the big tight end, Donald Lee, a huge target at 6'4", 248. That's a guy that Sparky Woods says he wants to try and incorporate more into the Bulldog offense. They use him a lot in pass protection. They'll keep him in if they expect a blitz, but uh, sneak him out on an option route. Tight end, number 94, just going to go down and hook. Easy throw for Wayne Matkin against zone coverage. And it gives Mississippi State a first down at the 43-yard line. Matkin looking up top. Grindle incomplete at the five-yard line. They haven't been afraid to throw it downfield, Mike, that's for no, sure. But I like the play calling because they run the football, hammer at South Carolina, and they're going to get their opportunities deep downfield, too. That's just good coverage by South Carolina. And the good news for quarterback Matkin, that was the 110th consecutive pass attempt without an interception. That is a school record. Tying the mark set by Don Smith. Here's the toss to Walker. Walker up to the 48-yard line, brought down by Jermaine Lemon that time. Walker last week ran the ball 68 for 68 yards on 15 rushes against Memphis. That was actually 17 days ago. Third down and four. They have converted on all four third down situations. Out of the backfield. They're waiting for that one. Fumble. And South Carolina has the ball. John Stamper recovered the loose pill. Rashad Faison with a good tackle. And here's what South Carolina does very well. They'll take advantage of your mistakes. So they'll, they'll hang around and hang around. Georgia made some mistakes again against them, and they benefited from it. South Carolina on defense, same play. They hit right on the first play. Dante Walker gets hit right on the football with Rashad Faison and uh, South Carolina in good shape. Yeah, the coaches will be the first to tell you Faison a big hitter. That man stamped with a beneficiary. First down and 10 for the Gamecocks. Again, the blitz of Mississippi State is bothering the offensive line of South Carolina. They're real itchy. You know, that long layoff and getting ready for this blitz. For the snap movement by the offensive line, five yards, still first down. You just got to sit in there. Joe Lee Dunn, uh, the defensive coordinator, coordinator, doesn't use a headset. Uh, I think all the other coaches can go get a hot dog <laughs> while Joe Lee's calling and then just it's, once they know what he's calling, watch for their position, guys. They do bring a lot of heat and a lot of pressure on defense. First down and 15. Eddie out of the shotgun. Pass complete to Alexander. Alexander out to the 40-yard line, brought down by Josh Morgan on the play, an eight-yard pickup for South Carolina. So they get some back. You can see the strategy, oh, Mark, of South Carolina. I don't believe they've attempted a run yet. Now they, they're throwing the ball out. They, they look at the linebackers up so tight. They're trying to get the ball outside to Corey Alexander here on a quick bubble screen. But 
so far we haven't seen Watson we haven't seen Pinnick try to really hit up in there different strategy S substitution uh, penalty on South Carolina saw that happen against Georgia and it really caught actually pardon me it was Georgia that really cost in that game but another penalty against the Gamecocks I've been watching Jackie Sherrill he's really on the officials and he wanted that penalty called on the last play he's, he's in the year of the officials Nose of the ball moved back to the 45 yard line as we approach six minutes to go in the first period. Second down in 12. Bulldogs bring pressure. Good call on the screen. This is Watson. First time he touches the ball tonight. Down to the 35 yard line, brought down by Wright, a 10 yard pickup. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Mark, I talked with South Carolina offensive coordinator Skip Holt before the game. He said, I usually call the game more conservatively on the road, but I probably called it too conservative in the road win at Georgia two weeks ago. He said, tonight my play calling is going to be dictated by the score and how much pressure Mississippi State's bringing. Right now, they're bringing a lot. Sure are. Third down and two. They get the first down and then some. Pin up. Touchdown, South Carolina. 35 yards virtually untouched. They took advantage of the fumble by Dante Walker. And that play reminded me of the Washington Redskins when John Riggins hit it up there in the Super Bowl because everybody sells out in the short yardage defense. And if you get the right seam, there's nobody back in center field. So a touchdown for South Carolina. Daniel Weaver in for the extra point. Andrew Pinnock with his third rushing touchdown this season. See, here's, a, here's another problem. When you're off for a while in concentration, they don't have enough guys on the field, but they still. Now they call a timeout. And I think I'd have taken the penalty. Take the penalty, move back five yards still. It's not worth the time extra point. No. Lou Holtz is livid. His voice intoning vehemently. And they're feeling the heat right now. We'll be right back. If the way it's made doesn't convince you, or the durability, or the safety, or the comfort, or the performance, or the way you're treated, if all that doesn't make you want to buy a Saturn, no offer will. Of course, we could be wrong. Get 0.9% APR financing on select 2002 models. For restrictions, see your retailer. Wow. I know. She's gorgeous. Oh, dude, her candle went out. Oh, watch this. I saw this in a movie once. Want to get noticed? Grab a Miller Light. It's Miller time. That wasn't in the movie, was it? No. Oh, uh, say, can I have the new software IT didn't approve? Fred, I promised someone remote access. What is remote access? At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why we have top name brands in stock, so you get the solutions you need when you need them. Like the HP NetServer LP2000R. Great performance and manageability in a 2U rack optimized server, only from HP. Fred, here is another request that can't be done in time. HP and CDW, computing solutions built for business. College football Saturday. Louisville tackles Big Ten premier passer Kurt Kittner in Illinois. Louisville, Illinois, noon Saturday on ESPN. Hey, South Carolina with a touchdown moments ago. They trail with the extra point to come. He told Daniel Weaver. And another flag on the play. There you go. Lou Holtz has uh, cooled off to a boil now, Mike. And I think both teams will settle down a little bit more as we get into this football game. Oh. 
defense in the neutral zone, half the distance, still one try. Al Ford, our official today, wearing the white hat, a very busy man so far here in the first period with 5.23 to play. After much time and thought, Weaver knocks it through, and we are tied at seven apiece. So the Gamecocks able to convert after that fumble recovery on the big hit on Walker. Mark, we talked about turnovers that set up the score, penalties. We've had several here from the start. And here's the touchdown. Andrew Pinnock and uh, what we're going to do is get a block down, block down, a kick out on the top by Frankie McCullen and then Gavin Ford, number 43, is going to get a block in the secondary and just nobody back there. Bad angle by Josh Morgan, number 47. So the first turnover computes into seven points for South Carolina. About what you expected so far. Exactly, game, exactly. But I thought Mississippi State, and, and I expect them to go back to more running game. South Carolina's tried two running uh, plays and uh, very successful in the second one. Walker back deep for Mississippi State along with Fraser. Under the lights here at Scott Field, Mississippi State coming into the game 1-0, South Carolina 2-0. Walker at the five. Got a good block from Prather. Walker with another nice return out to the 43-yard line. A 38-yard return on the play. And once again, Mississippi State with good field position. You spotted it. Pink Prather really with a very good block to set up this big kickoff return. So good field position. Number 29, Pink Prather right here. He's eyeing him up right here. And he makes a heck of a block to start this run off. Felt that one up here. Ooh. Bowers, the kicker, made the tackle on the play. Pig got dirty. He sure did. First down and 10. To the eye, they give it to number 12. That's DeCenzo Miller back in the ball game for Mississippi State. The pressure falls on Wayne Matkin here at State. We talked to Sparky Woods about the leadership issue, and he, he talked about Wayne Mack, and he said he practices hard, he's unselfish, but he's not a huge team morale guy, and uh, he said he wouldn't trade him for any quarterback in the SEC. It's funny, at SEC Media Day, everybody talked about every other quarterback but him being all-conference. He just says, I go out and play, and I try and win games. And that he has done. Second down and eight. Finds his target complete down to the 45-yard line. That's Brindle tackled by Sheldon Brown. He was working on the All-American well that time. What Wayne Matkin sees on this play, Mark, is all of a sudden now South Carolina saying, hey, we've got to get some people inside to help against the run. So he's got wide open wide receivers on the outside. Brindle makes this catch against Sheldon Brown, the All-American corner. First down and 10 subsequently from the 46-yard line. As we approach four minutes to play in the first period, we're tied at seven. Out of the backfield complete. Number 85, Lindsey. They have really spread it around to a bunch of different targets. They really have, and they put really the, uh, the first quarter on their quarterback, Wayne Matkin. Uh, and Sparky, to conclude that thought, he says he's got his hands full at the quarterback because we asked him to do an awful lot for us at the line of scrimmage. Big two and out of good plays and bad plays. Seven to ten so far. This time hands it off to Miller. Stopped short of the 41-yard line. Jeremiah Garrison with a big hit. Folks, ESPN College game day presented by Discover Card joining... Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Kerbstreet. This weekend game day looks at live shots with head coaches Larry Coker of Miami and Bob Stoops of Oklahoma. Your all-access pass also with Rice University. 
College game day, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, 7.30 a.m. Pacific on ESPN. Third down and five for Mississippi State. Atkin, and it's knocked away that time, intended for Grindle. That time, Brown got a beat on the ball and closed. A yeah, good break by Sheldon Brown on the ball. Grindle with the curl route. And then Sheldon Brown reads the quarterback's eyes and makes a good, strong break to knock the ball away. And into punt now is Jared Cook. Three punts this year, averaging 45 yards. This time, put this one inside the 20 to no avail, though. And the Gamecocks will start off on their own 20-yard line. Levity striking Brewer. We'll be back in just a minute. Hmm, hadn't heard from Terry today. Things must be kind of quiet at Fowler Pearl Brandon. Hi, diggity dog. Look at all these GMC trucks. Folks, we've doubled our rack and truck inventory, and we're ready to move some trucks. We got 2002 GMC Yukons with discounts up to 4,500. 2001 GMC Extended Cab, Auto V8, 18,995. Fowler Buick GMC, we are Rankin County's new truck giant. Problems after an accident aren't always obvious. In fact, major problems can be easily hidden. Proper repair techniques are crucial in returning your vehicle to pre-accident condition. Every technician at Clinton Body Shop is committed to making sure that the repairs on your vehicle meet the safety and appearance standards you expect. We don't take shortcuts. We don't approve the use of inferior parts. It's not the insurance company's list that we're obligated to. It's you, our customer. At Clinton Body Shop, we take pride in perfection seriously. Fall Saturday at 7.45 on ESPN. Auburn heads for the Carrier Dome where all eyes are on Dwight Freeney, one of the best sack men in the nation. At 9 on ESPN2, the sixth-ranked Longhorns, led by standout QB Chris Sims, have an offense that's dangerous. He got it! Touchdown! Now they run with Houston. Auburn, Syracuse at 7.45 on ESPN. Texas, Houston at 9 on ESPN2. College football Saturday. South Carolina and Mississippi State tied at seven apiece, both members of the SEC and their conference with a very magnanimous gesture, the SEC donating some $1 million to the re relief effort of last week's terrorist attacks in New York and in Washington. And they have also printed the U.S. flag on helmets and uniforms across the conference. Mike, it feels like college football again, doesn't it? It's back in... Uh even though we keep in mind the people have suffered in New York and Washington and Pennsylvania. It was a stirring pregame and uh, everybody here is uh, stars and praying to the down. good Lord. Yeah. Praying to the good Lord for our country. That's what we need. First down and ten. Dawes in the game for South Carolina. Petty comes back the other way. Under duress, throws it out of bounds. Big Prather putting the heat on him. Phil Petty has not finished a game against Mississippi State in the last two. Now here he runs for his life, and he really makes this play. He almost gets sacked. Takes, takes a couple of hits uh, by some uh, Dorset Davis. One, number 99. And Pig Prather. Pig is hitting everything and moves. There is today. And he said he was knocked out of the last two games. His survival instincts at a premium tonight. Second down and 10. Petty on the quick slant to Brewer. Complete for the first down and then some. Out to the 39-yard line. You're not going to find a more gritty, gutty player than number 21 for South Carolina, Mike. No, and he leads South Carolina with nine receptions. He's uh, They use him in all special teams. He's one of the favorite receivers by quarterback Phil Petty. He'll run the reverse. He just does so many things. I'll back most valuable player against Ohio State from Troy, Ohio. 18-yard pickup on that last pass catch. First down and 10 for the game pass. They hand it off to Watson. Watson got a few, brought down by Connor Stevens, number 90. 
Stevens and Hagen, a couple of great bookends at defensive end for Mississippi State. And they, they really, last year, Mississippi State did not allow South Carolina to run the football. 30 yards uh, against this defense, same blitzing defense where you commit the linebackers to the run. Second down and four for South Carolina. And again, this time stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. It was someone different this time, Khalil Nash, number 92, leading the charge. Derek Watson's the kind of back that he gets frustrated if you get penetration. We talked to Joe Lee Dunn the other day about uh, Derek Watson, how to stop him. He said, we got to get penetration, got to start, got to get him before he starts. And so far, they've been successful. And he gets frustrated because he wants to make a big play on every time he touches the football. Watson also struggled in the last game with his health against Georgia. Third down and three. They blitz, but the pass complete for the first down to Brian Scott. And, who Petty really took a hit that time. Yeah, no, the hits will wear on Phil Petty as this game goes on. But he's engineering this drive right now. There's not a lot of room for mistakes because it's happened so quick. He gets the snap from the shotgun. I like putting him back in the shotgun. He takes the hit. And here's the route on the outside. Now the receiver's got to get his head around right away to make that catch. Brian Scott. And Brian Scott set to the sidelines after that play. Being checked out by the doctors. Hand it off. Nothing doing in the middle. Connor Stevens again in on the play. You get the feeling Jolie Dunn really loves his defensive ends, doesn't oh, he? He does, and, and he has a reason to because they're so active, and they've got good size. When we sat down again with Jolie Dunn, he said, I have six defensive players that'll play in pro football. And then when we talked to Sparky Woods, he said, I got five. So uh, they make no bones about it. They got good players. No doubt you will see some of them at the next level. Well, the first 15 minutes are in the books. We are back playing college football. 7-7 here at Scott Field. We'll be right back. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Now 90 minutes. Question about DirecTV? Yeah, I hear this thing hits like an insane amount of sports channels. Hi, honey. What's up? You're absolutely right, sir. With DirecTV, you and your family can enjoy wonderful educational channels together. I'll let you guys talk. Here's the pitch. We know how you feel about DirecTV, and that's why you'll get DirecTV installed in two rooms with two receivers for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate. Circuit City, we're with you. If the way it's made doesn't convince you, or the durability, or the safety, or the comfort, or the performance, or the way you're treated. If all that doesn't make you want to buy a Saturn, no offer will. Of course, it could be wrong. Get 0.9% APR financing on select 2002 models. For restrictions, see your retailer. Big green combine, heads you at the wheel Under a big sky, working in the field From the brewery crew to the lager and man Get it to you fast and fresh as they can This is from the people working hard every day Talking about the folks who get this bun my way This bun's for you And you and you and you This bun's for you Hey mom, dad wants to know what you for dinner Tell him nothing until he apologizes to me Mom said no dinner until you apologize. Sure, get it. She owes me the apology. Uh, Dad says he's really sorry. He wants to take us to McDonald's to make up for it. He said that? Yeah. Mom says you were right. She thinks we should go to McDonald's. Really? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Can we please go to McDonald's now? We love to see you. Every morning, it's the same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Bye, babe. Finally, there's a better way to soothe your skin. 
New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is brought to you by Original Coors. Nothing beats an original. And by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. We're here at Scott Field on the campus of Mississippi State University. Mark Jones along with Mike Gottfried and Jimmy Dice down on the sidelines. Second down, they run the reverse to Corey Alexander. He's got room. Alexander with another Gamecock first down, brought down by Banks at the 20-yard line. Fastest player on the South Carolina football team, Corey Alexander. Start him in motion. Everybody blocks down. His speed gets him outside. A big play. They've changed the field position game again. Jimmy Dykes talked about the Georgia game plan. Skip Holtz thought he was a little conservative. He's been wide open here so far. Yeah, it looks entirely different. Maybe close to a face mask infraction there. Out of the shotgun on first and ten. Incomplete, a flag down near side, 25 yard line. Either the offense is moving or somebody's offside for a state. That has been one of the themes here so far in the game is penalties by both teams. This one against the offense of South Carolina. Really been impressed with offense Phil had Petty. only six men on the line of scrimmage, five yard penalty. Repeat. In what sense? Mark, he's making all the right decisions, and, and he's, he's checking at the line of scrimmage, but he's right on with the blitz. He's going to the right receivers at the right time. He's playing a hundred percent football right here in the first quarter. Thinking man's game by Phil Petty. Teams combined for a total of seven penalties. First down and 15. Backside pressure by the Bulldogs, but Petty comes the other way complete to Corey Alexander, who got that big run just a few moments ago. Birdsong making the stop on the play. The story of the game so far as we look back at our ESPN game track in the first quarter, it was all D, as in DeCenzo Miller of Mississippi State, rushing the ball for 25 yards. Receiving for 46 and then Dante Walker came in to punctuate the point with a touchdown And then it was Pinnock countering for South Carolina Untouched into the end zone 35 yards his third of the season second down and seven for the Gamecocks And that one well read by the Bulldogs on defense Hagan and Morgan in to make the stop on Watson Just a good job of defending the option. Phil Petty comes down the line, kicks the ball out, but uh, here's a missed tackle. Hagan slowed him down a little bit, Mike. And then Morgan came in to finish him off. Third down and nine. The receiver they've been looking to so far is Corey Alexander, number three. He is lined up right here. Right Right there in the slot right. Bulldogs come with pressure. Incomplete out of the outstretched arms of Brian Stott, who came back into the game. Talked about feast or famine now. You, you have only so much time to throw against the, the linebackers pressuring you. Had a chance there for a big play touchdown. Those corners that the Bulldogs really have a lot of pressure on them. They really they? do. They. Uh, I really believe that they would either be the winner or the loser of this football game. Daniel Weaver from 35 yards out. He's two of two on the season. And he knocks this one through to give the South Carolina Gamecocks a 10 to 7 lead. 12 days ago, they were Road Warriors. They're looking to accomplish that feat again. We'll be right back. Your buddy has had a bit too much to drink. Everyone at the party is looking away, but not you. You get involved. You take away his car keys and you get him home safely. So you miss a party. 
it sure beats missing a friend. Crime. It was the way she was done, Inspector. Altogether a different breed of killer. An unconventional detective. This was all in your dreams? I saw her face. An unexpected attraction. Your vision's about me. Most definitely. Johnny Depp, Heather Graham, from the Hughes Brothers. Jack the Ripper's not finished. A legend. I gave the birth to the 20th century. Emerges. You're not going to see the 20th century. From hell. Rated R. October 19th. Only in theaters. All right, boys, last card. I'm gonna raise you a dollar. You must have something, boys. It's just a buck. Hey, don't you know about 1010-220? What? Yeah, man, 1010-220. All calls up to 20 minutes. 99 cents. I'm just seven cents a minute after that. All calls up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents? See, a buck is worth a lot. I'm out. Me too. Man. I call you. Read them and wait, boys. Dial 1010-220. How do you like me now? Yeah. How do you like me now? Welcome back, everyone, to College Football, presented by Circuit City. We're in Starkville, Mississippi. Scott Field of South Carolina leads 10 to 7. Who holds his team leading by a field goal so far? I don't think there was any question as to whether he would, if not have his team ready coming into the game, make the necessary adjustments. Mike. Well, and you talked about the home field advantage states had 17 out of 18 here at home, but South Carolina is quiet and proud. This time, Mississippi State will not get a chance to return the kickoff. They had two good ones previous to that one. This week on our ESPN College Football Question of the Night, which SEC coach gets the most out of his team? Steve Spurrier, Philip Fulmer, Tommy Tuberville, Lou Holtz, or Jackie Sherrill? Polling closes at halftime, so log on and vote now. Plus, there's a lot of other guys in the SEC that are pretty good oh, coaches. But when you look at that kind of graphic, it's the staff in college football. Your defensive coordinator, your defensive staff, your offensive coordinator, your offensive staff. So head coach is the overseer. First down and 10. That is Dante Walker out to the 24-yard line. And you look at the South Carolina staff, Mike, it's a young staff. Young staff, uh, Skip Holtz, runs the offense. Former head coach at Connecticut. Charlie Strong runs the defense. Uh, coach in Florida under Steve Spurrier, Notre Dame under Bob Davey, uh, and Lou Holtz, and uh, he's done a very good job. they got a good staff. Second down and six. Walker again, choosing his holes very judiciously out to the 32-yard line, stopped by Kalimba Edwards. Ran into his own man and kept going. Yeah, he really did. He ran into the offensive lineman and then stopped and cut and went to the left and picked up the first down. Kalimba Edwards, we, you're going to say his name a lot today because he's one of the better defensive linemen in the country. All-American candidate himself. First down and 10 for Mississippi State. They trail by three. Atkins. Rule completed the 42-yard line. Terrell Brindle laid out and made the catch working on Brown. You know, we talked about Mississippi State's defensive backs are going to be their win or lose it in Phil Petty on the other side. But Wayne Matkin really has a lot of pressure on him because they run the football well. He gets the ball out to Grindle. A little high, but Grindle makes a good catch. Sheldon Brown, good corner on coverage. Toss on first down and providing good run support as Willie offered to make the stop on the play. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Hey, Mark, Wayne Matkin came in this ballgame on a national level, probably not with the respect this kid reserves. deserves. He's the number two in the nation right now among active quarterbacks and as far as number of career wins. Only Eric Crouch at Nebraska has more. Sparky Woods made a great point. You're asking a 20 twin win year old kid at the quarterback position to match wits with a defensive coordinator. So far, Matt has done a pretty good job. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. And the game has really evolved into just that. The quarterback against the D coordinator. Matt can sack. And it was Charlie Strong getting the best of the quarterback that time. Oford in on the stop. And then you talk about the 25-second clock, all the changes in defense. When the bus rolls up to the stadium, the defensive coordinator says, your quarterback has to beat me. Here, John Stamper just ran over the uh, 
protection. Willie Offord also helping. This South Carolina defense is a really good defense. I saw them against Georgia. They hang in there, hang in there, and get the turnovers to, to help their offense. They've done it once already, forcing a turnover, fumble recovery leading to a touchdown. Third and 19 for Matkin and the Bulldogs. Looking to make a play, forced out of bounds, and the Bulldogs will have to punt. That time, the South Carolina defense dictating things. Zone coverage, three-man rush, everybody sitting back in coverage, no place to throw. A frustrated Wayne Matkin just stretched out the field and finally gets tackled near the out-of-bounds mark. Again, South Carolina getting the best of this. Fourth down and 21, and Jared Cook into punt. You got that guy back there, Ryan Brewer. Just makes things happen. Standing at his own 28. A line drive returnable punt. Brewer at the 34. Good special teams coverage that time by the Bulldogs. Number 20 offered, making the stop on the play. South Carolina leading 10 to 7 under the lights at Scott Field. We'll be right back. Your buddy is just a whisker away from making the worst decision of his life. But he doesn't see it that way. He's had too much to drink. That's where you come in and keep him from getting behind the wheel. He may not say thank you, but I'll say it for him. Thanks, buddy. So log on to ESPN.com, keyword discover card, and enter your predictions. Win the chance to appear on January 1st for the hosts of College Game Day at the Rose Bowl and test your wits against the finest analytical college football minds known to man. They love me for my mind. Captain Game Day. Discover card gets you on Game Day Challenge. ESPN.com, keyword discover card. Hey, what's with the cap? You got a Little League game today or something? Nah, I'm just used to it. You know, a lot of people aren't crazy about their hair. They got different ways of dealing with it, especially if you got flakes. Here's how I deal with it. I tell them, use this whole new head and shoulders. It goes directly to the scalp to help stop flakes before they even start. So you end up looking like you were born with a great head of hair. Now, who'd want to cover that up? Oh, forgot your hat. No, thanks. New head and shoulder shampoo. Unbeatable daily dandruff protection. Unbelievably beautiful hair. College football Saturday. Auburn takes on Big East sack man Dwight Freeney and the Cuse. Auburn, Syracuse, 745 Saturday on ESPN. South Carolina with the ball and the lead, 10 to 7. Coach Phil Petty says he's got a better understanding of the offense this year at show so far. Really, the longer you're with a coaching staff and the uh, longer you're with a coordinator in, in the offense, like he and Skip Holt have a special relationship, and he does understand he's the extension of the coach at the line of scrimmage. Hands it off to Pinnock, the fullback, who scored the touchdown run of 35 yards in the first quarter. Brought down by Robertson. Now they've had six or now seven first down plays. They've had four runs and three passes. They started this game, South Carolina throwing the ball all over the lot. Now they've spread out state's defense a little bit. Now they're pounding them with the running game. Skip Holtz really patient. mixing yeah, up the bag of tricks. And he's patient over there. He's, he's making, uh, he's calling the Duke game so far. Second down and two. Ford and Watson lining up out of the eye. That's Pinnock. The deep back over midfield. For the first down, down to the 47-yard line, picking up 10 on that play. So we see Pinnock move to the tailback spot in place of Watson and get some good yardage. Pinnock is a, a big-time running back, and he really helps Phil Petty. Now, Skip Holtz told Phil Petty he wanted to cut down on the interceptions. He hasn't thrown one this year. He threw eight touchdowns last year and ten interceptions. So they've made a real concerted effort to cut down on his interceptions. So far, so good. And he also saying he got bigger and stronger during the offseason with some contact. And flags dropped.
Both teams at times seeing just a little bit too eager on their respective interior lines. Defense made contact before the ball was snapped. Five yards, still first down. This one going against the Bulldogs. Folks, don't forget, ESPN football coming your way. Kurt Kittner in Illinois taking on the Louisville Cardinals in a battle of a couple of unbeaten teams. Louisville at 3-0, Illinois at 2-0. That's noon Saturday on ESPN. First down and five now for South Carolina. And brought down at the 43-yard line is Carlos Spikes. Carlos Spikes, it was a pass all the way. A good call by Skip Holtz. Anytime you cross the 50-yard line mark and you got a first and five, it's kind of a throwaway down. You got a chance for a big play. He tried to get the ball down the field to Brian Scott. Pretty good coverage by State, but I think kind of hung it up anyway and see if they could bring it in or get an interference call. Second down and six as a result. Here's Brewer out here now. He's a key receiver for him also. They hand it off to Pinnock. Allowing his way down to the 38-yard line, tackled by Tommy Kelly. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Mark, talking to South Carolina coaches before this ball game, they said the key to Mississippi State's defense is the cover corner guys, in particular, Demetric Wright and Corey Banks. They said if those two guys are able to lock us up in man coverage, it's going to allow Jolie Dunn's defense to bring a lot of pressure tonight. Keep an eye on 2 and 24 in maroon jersey right now. All right, Jimmy, and... Uh, Number two, the All-American uh, wearing the number of Fred Smoot. And so far, they've done what they need to do in the secondary. They have done exactly what Jimmy Dyke said. They've, they've covered pretty well. South Carolina, though, Mike, moving the ball pretty well on the ground using Pinnock. And Pinnock has been the key because uh, Watson's out, and they're going to more of a hammering with the Andrew Pinnock. He's 5'11", 250, out of Connecticut. Uh, very heralded high school football player. He's run the ball four times for 58 yards total. Third down and one. Let's go! Pinnock is the lone back. Looked like the same play they ran for the touchdown, Mike. Same play. Uh, Overloading the right side, blocking down, backs with key blocks. Is the offensive line of South Carolina blocking down. Watch them all block down here to the right side. And then the backs will lead. Penny, good burst on the first step to get to the line of scrimmage. And now, Mike, they have run the ball five consecutive times. First down and 10 to go. Pressure off the corner, and they sack Petty back at the 38-yard line. That's Sean Birdsong. Sean Birdsong is an interesting player because he got his start last year against Florida and got really beat twice by Jabari Gaffney. And he said his friends, he always wanted to play on national TV, and he said his friends called him and said, you know, you got beat twice. And he said he almost wanted to cry, but they'll be proud of him tonight because he makes a big play on Phil Petty. After that Florida game, came back the next week and played well in subsequent weeks, became the team starter and has been a fixture since. Second down and 14. Picked off. Corey Banks. But there's a flag down at the 43-yard line. And it's recovered after another fumble. Always tell your... Defensive backs, Corey Banks, when you intercept that football, it's ours. You've got to lock it away. But South Carolina, with a good tackle to jar it loose. Phil Petty threw that ball behind his receiver. Very much behind, and Brewer made the fumble recovery on the play. Holding by the defense in the backfield. The penalty is 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Repeating second down.
Here's the pass play. Phil Petty trying to get the ball to Carlos Spikes. He has him uh, leading, but uh, Corey Banks, he threw it behind him. Now let's see what happens. There's our guy, Ryan Brewer, number 21. Caused it and recovered Caused the him. fumble. <laughs> he does everything. He must drive the bus, team bus. Second down and 24. South Carolina in an empty backfield formation. Little receiver screen complete. Back across the formation was Carlos Spikes, who got rocked coming back the other way. State runs well on defense. Play doesn't have long enough to really develop because of the speed in the secondary. You're not going to go east-west against these no. guys that often, are you? Joe Lee, he's got that brains going, and uh, he's thinking about what call he wants. He doesn't want anybody talking to him. Third down and 21. Eddie going up top for Scott. And Banks was there on the coverage again. It's incomplete, and it'll be fourth down for South Carolina. That's the play two weeks ago against Georgia that really set up the final touchdown. Corey Banks in good shape against Brian Scott. Into punt now is Tyler Dean. Banks then on his own 10 yard line. This one bounces into the end zone just barely out of the grasp of ages. So the Bulldogs will start off on their own 20 when we come back trailing by three. At Danny Berry Chevrolet in Crystal Springs, we do business differently. We believe that so strongly that we're ready to back it up with this guarantee. Whether you're shopping for a new car or truck or want service from one of the top rated Good Rent Service Plus dealers in this area, come to our dealership. If you don't see a noticeable difference, see me. I'll give you a free oil change. We're just that confident. Chevrolet says we'll be there. And at Danny Berry, I'll be here. Come see the difference, and if you don't agree, get a free oil change on me. Like all Americans, the Miskelly family is deeply saddened by the tragic events of September 11th. Saturday, our local firemen will be at Muskelly's collecting donations for the families of the firefighters who lost their lives in New York City. Muskelly Furniture and our employees will also make a contribution to this worthy cause. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all the victims and their families during this very tragic loss. Did I go too far? And we're back. College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. La NFL Dominical por ESPN. 7.30 p.m. hora del este en ESPN Deportes. Welcome back to Scott Field. I'm Mark Jones along with Mike Gottfried and Jimmy Dykes down at the sidelines. Mississippi State with the ball trailing by three points. They're expecting a crowd of, well, a school record crowd of a little over 46,000 people here tonight. As they canceled classes a little bit early at 2 o'clock this afternoon to accommodate some of the expected crowd. Bulldog offense has stalled on its last three possessions. Atkins to pass. Complete to Miller. Miller really can't make something out of nothing. Gets the first down out to the 35. And he did that. Exactly what you're talking about, Wayne Matkin. That wasn't a screen pass. I think what Desenzo Miller was doing was blocking on the play, but he saw it was alive. And as Wayne Matkin was moving to right, he moved with him. And that's a sign of a good receiver, a smart football player. Desenzo Miller, he does everything for this team. He holds on extra points and field goals as a tailback. Dope Walker candidate, Desenzo Miller, number 12. Matt 
Pumpkin has a receiver complete to Grindle at the 31-yard line. He was working on Sheldon Brown on the play of pickup of 34 yards. And Matkin shows the strength in his arm, but Grindle shows concentration bringing that football in. Here's the wide receiver against coverage by Sheldon Brown. Grindle goes, works upfield, but watch his concentration. He's up high, gets tackled, brings the ball in. Took a hit and held on. First and 10 for the Bulldogs from the 31. Headed off to Miller, down to the 29-yard line, brought down by Jermaine Lemon. Mark, when we talked to Columbia Edwards on the phone, he said, I like to play down. Now, a lot of people compare him to Javon Kirst, the former Florida football player. Watch him on, he, he comes inside, takes on the block, and then gets his arms to make the tackle. They tell me Dom Capers is here tonight just to watch Kalimba Edwards. He is a big time talent, All-American prospect. They run the screen, complete to Griffith, the fullback. Takes it down to the 16-yard line. Brought down by Edwards, number 55, the guy we were just talking about, but not before a 14-yard pickup. Got a good block that time from Courtney Lee, too. Beautifully designed football play. Looks like a screen to the right side. Wayne Matkin sets it up. Now Justin Griffith gets on the outside. Now your blocker's got to take over. So you got a chance to go all the way. That's Courtney Lee, number 74. showing just touch as well. Justin Jenkins in motion. They toss it into the boundary and nothing doing on that play. Willie Offord leading the charge. And the Bulldogs will lose a few yards on that play. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy. Mark, I'll tell you what impressed me about Wayne Matkin in practice this week. This kid's closer to 6'5 than 6'4. Those last three passes he completed, he would have never gotten them off if he wasn't that tall, couldn't see over the top of that rush. This kid has a real physical presence on that football field. And Jimmy Sparky Woods coached Aaron Brooks at Virginia under George Welsh. Of course, Aaron Brooks is at the Saints now, and he compares both of them. They, he said that Wayne Matkin's a lot like Aaron Brooks. It's a very favorable comparison for him. Matkin on the slant intended for Grindle incomplete. No flags on the play. Andre Goodman on the coverage, number 35. Yeah, pretty good coverage by Andre Goodman. Might have got his arms tied up a little bit, but it's good coverage, good no call. But good. Jimmy, Jimmy talked about Wayne Matkin's arm. You could see it again, the strength of the arm. Really soft-spoken. Young man presents himself well. Here's where you got to beat South Carolina. When you get inside the 25-yard line, you can't go backwards. Third and 15. Incomplete. He went right back to number 15, Grindle. Looking for a flag, but getting none. Same thing against Georgia. Three field goal attempts. They made two. They missed one. They're very good when you get in their territory. And the field shrinks a little bit. Charlie Strong with a good job defensively keeping State out of the end zone. And he has ties to Jackie Sherrill. He was a former Brad assistant under Sherrill back at Texas a and In to attempt a field goal from 38 yards out is John Michael Marlin. And he knocked this one just a little bit to the left. He is now one of three on the season. So an opportunity goes by the boards for the Bulldogs and the South Carolina defense one more dodges a bullet. We'll be right back. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for all your help. It's my job. Wow. Honey, can we start now? Yes. Yes, we can. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Sweetie. Yeah, just put that anywhere. Right now, when you buy any four Michelin tires, get a pair of Motorola Talk About Two-Way radios free during Michelin's Make Contact event. They're great for road trips, on the slopes, or for keeping track of the kids. So make contact now at your participating Michelin dealer. 
Once again, Michelin has earned the JD Power and Associates Awards for customer satisfaction in tires. Now that's cause for celebration. My father was in the garage business, and his father was in the garage business. Well, my father was my mechanic all my life. I've got some old, old Craftsman tools that are still around, which I love and I, I treasure. My grandfather and also my father's tools, which uh, nobody could ever buy. 1,800 Craftsman hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. He really believed in Craftsman, same as I do. South Carolina with a field goal advantage. The last time they played here in Starkville, Mississippi, that was back in 1999. They lost 17 to nothing, so already 10 points ahead of the game. Really have played well in this first half. They, they made the most of every little thing that they tried to do on offense for running the ball better. Bill Petty managing the reins of the South Carolina offense. First down and 10 from the 21 yard line. That time Pennix checked that. It was Watson stopped up for a loss of one. And let's go back to the studio. Find out what's happening at halftime. All right, Mark. Well, let me tell you, Barry Bonds was in action this afternoon, which means we were in action covering him. We'll talk about that. Rice is playing Nebraska as we speak. Big 12 action and West Coast action coming up this weekend will be on the dock. It is Chris Kirkland Coach. Join me later on at halftime. Now back to the Second down and 12 for South Carolina. And it's Watson. Up near the 30, brought down just shy of it by Sean Birdsong. Surprised that they haven't run the ball with Watson as much as you might have thought coming into this game? I think their game plan's right. Pinnick is the, probably the stronger back, but Watson's doing a good job on the outside. South Carolina's rush offense. Last year, we talked about the game, 30 yards rushing. Tonight, I think they're close. They're, they're 102. And to borrow from John Miller and Joe Morgan, it's like when you play against the defensive coordinator for three years, it's like a pitcher going around, and all of a sudden you face him, and then you face him again, you face him again, and you start to figure him out a little bit. And I think South Carolina's doing some interesting things to Joe Lee Dunn's defense. Point well taken. Getting a feel for the vibe, and don't forget that, folks, Saturday, it's Auburn against Syracuse, 745 Eastern on ESPN. The Orangemen try to slow SEC foe Auburn in a huge game for both teams. It's under the dome in Syracuse, 745 Eastern time for four. Log on to ESPN.com. Big game for Auburn and Syracuse. I think it's a game for Syracuse. They can turn everything around. Uh, if they can beat Auburn. Now, Auburn's a young ball club. Tommy Tuberville's got a fresh quarterback going in to play in a dome for the first time. First road game. It'll be tough. And Fred Newman's really struggled right from the jump. Third down and two for South Carolina. And they're close to the first down. That was Pinnock again. Mike, I gotta hang around you a lot more. I've gotten used to that formation. That's the third time now we've seen it, right? Third time and uh, this first close, close game you've had also, thank, right? Thank you, uh, yeah, that's right. Very competitive. Pinnock taking a well-deserved rest on the sidelines. He, of the one who ran for a 35-yard touchdown in the first quarter. I wouldn't be surprised if a screen or something short here. And then South Carolina still has three timeouts. So if they can get about to the 40, 45, they might start unleashing uh, long passes a little bit more. Here's a draw. There's Watson finding a seam up the middle. And Watson for the first down at the 46-yard line. Said draw or screen. It's a draw now. Lou Holtz is thinking about scoring now. He, he, at the 30-yard line, he was thinking maybe about taking the lead to that locker room, but now he's got three timeouts, and so now the play calling changes here. Here's the draw. You talked about Watson now. Here, he's seen Pinnock run up inside. Now he wants to get his share. Last year, Watson led South Carolina in rushing Went for over 1,000 yards, 1,066. First down and 10, under two minutes to play in the first half. 
They want a timeout from the sideline. They didn't like this play. No up top, incomplete intended for Brian Scott. That one not even close. When you look at the South Carolina coaches on the side, they were not happy at all. That play took too much time, and there was a bust in formation or something happened to them. They were trying to get a timeout. Phil Petty just didn't see it. And you can't hear here. No, no. <laughs> and it's interesting. They have not allowed the cowbells in, those distinctively ringing cowbells that you usually hear here in Starkville, Mississippi. Second down and 10. A crowd of close to 46,000 on hand tonight. As we welcome back college football, second down and 10. Watson rocked by number 92, Khalil Nash. Nash, the 6'4", 281-pound junior making the stop. Khalil Nash took a different route to college. He signed with Ole Miss and left the team and went to prep school, then junior college at Arizona Western. Here he making, makes a heck of a hit and then tackles Derek Watson in the backfield as a bulldog. Yeah, that took him a long way to get here. <laughs> we found a home on that play. Four tackles tonight to go along with the sack. And a timeout on the field. This, this has been a bust here, these last two plays for South Carolina. Bulldogs with two timeouts remaining. Meanwhile, coming up at halftime, Sports Center in game. Join uh, Rich Eisen as uh, Barry Bonds chases history. Talk around the Big 12 and some of the West Coast tilts. Ohio State taking on UCLA and USC battling Oregon. With great uh, interconference battles. What do you think? Think Barry Barnes gets to gets to 70 coach? I watched him play last night. Uh, uh, Maliki was pitching for Houston, and um, Maliki had his <laughs> number. Did. Now, uh, whoever pitched for Houston today may have slipped, but uh, I think he's going to he's going to see some tough pitches as he gets down the way and it gets a little tighter as you get closer to the end of the season but he's a great athlete so big spotlight on Barry Bonds and spotlight tonight here on Starkville Mississippi can I say a welcome Go to ahead. the Air Force Captain Mary Scott Hunter she's a Jag uh, the daughter of Scott Hunter former quarterback Green Bay Packers okay. Alabama great guy she's at the Al Salim Air Force Base in Kuwait says ESPN's are entertainment. We salute all our service people all over the world. God bless them. Well said, Coach. Third down and 13. Betty keeps it on the quarterback drop. Connor Stevens was having none of it. Talked about when they got to the 45-yard line, they had three timeouts. And that's the benefit of uh, being the son of the head coach because he's not going to yell too much no. at you. But... Uh, those three plays were three busts right there. So uh, South Carolina didn't take advantage of the timeouts and the time and the field position. But you can credit Mississippi State. You know, Coach, as we look at Skip Holtz talking to his quarterback, you think about the contrast between Skip and his dad. Lou known more for that power eye football, and Skip really mixing things up here. Yeah, well, Skip's all right as long as Lou stays the way of run down the sideline. When when you see Lou start to get close to him, they're going to get more back in the two back and uh, get the ball to Derek Watson in run game. You got a point. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Mike, you talked about our military, and certainly that hits home tonight with head coach Jackie Sherrill. His son, Justin, 21 years old, is currently stationed at Shepard Air Force Base in Wichita Falls, Texas. That base, as most of them around the world right now, have been placed on high alert. Jackie had his weekly press conference interrupted from a phone call from Justin this week. Said, Dad, probably the last time I'll talk to you this week, my troops on the move. So head coach tonight, coaching a game, but thinking about life. Right, thank you, Jimmy, and our thoughts and prayers. Yeah, we pray for them all. Yeah, we certainly do. It's fun out of bounds, a good one. Marked out at the 17, a 42-yard punt, nothing on the return. So with 48 seconds to play in the first half, Mississippi State, who missed a field goal attempt on their last series, tries to maybe get within range with a couple of timeouts and get some points on the board. Now with 48 seconds, I'm, 
again, you start with a draw or a screen or something safe, and if you pick up something, then you take a shot. But I, I would think Mississippi State uh, throw something short, a quarterback draw, see what you get. Don't want to turn the ball over here with 48 seconds. Adkin works out of the shotgun on first down and 10. Underneath, complete, number 85, Harold Lindsay. Nice, safe throw. Again, uh, try, try something the same way. Hope you miss, miss a tackle on my receiver and get up to midfield so I can take a shot. That can forced out of the pocket and brought down from behind. Good pursuit on the play that time by number 93, Dennis Quinn. I would see enough right there. I'd just take it to the locker room and uh, regroup. Charlie Strong's defense has had a very large say in the score here in the first 30 minutes of play. As the first two quarters are in the books, Mississippi State, the home team trailing by a score of 10 to 7. Plenty coming up at halftime, and right now, let's get back to the studio and join Rich Eisen. Rich? All right, thanks very much. The first half of the first major college football game in over a week and a half is complete, and we've got a very full, chock-full of uh, information and news for you. College football halftime program, including what went on in San Francisco today. Barry Bonds, history clearly in his sights, had the home run swing working. We'll tell you what happened in a minute. Sidelines, coming Thursday, October 4th to ESPN. For men, every morning it's the same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Bye, babe. Finally, there's a better way to soothe your skin. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm, more evolved skin care. Oh, uh, say, can I have the new software IT didn't approve? Fred, I promised someone remote access. What is remote access? At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why we have top name brands in stock, so you get the solutions you need when you need them. Like Compaq Evo computing products. From wireless notebooks to workstations, Compaq Evo, leading the evolution of business computing. Fred, here is another request that can't be done in time. Compaq and CEW, computing solutions built for business. Jesse, come on, let's join the downhill race. I heard that. Good morning. Good morning. Jesse, come on, breakfast is getting cold. We have your daughter. Daddy. You have a patient. She has a six digit number in her head. I need that number. You need your daughter back. Michael Douglas. Is it a telephone number? No. Is it a place? No. Nope. And they're gonna kill her. What is it? No! Don't say a word. I'll never tell. Read it R. September 28th, only in theaters. Here we go. First, make sure your mirrors are right. Okay. Don't forget this one over here. All right. Okay. Okay, make sure it's in first. All right. Put on the brake. All right. Okay. Okay. Whoa, whoa, okay. whoa. Okay. Just take your foot. Okay, there you go. Hey, where are you going off in the lawn? Back to the driveway. Help protect the ones you value most. Call a State Farm agent today. Welcome to Sports Center In Game. Time for the Keystone Light Halftime Report. In San Francisco this afternoon, many races run concurrently the Wild Card, the National League West, and of course, the home run race, the San Francisco Giants taking on the Houston Astros, who had the brooms poised for the Giants. So we pick things up with the Astros leading 4-2. to two. And in the fifth inning, man on for Barry Bonds, and Bonds busts out the whooping stick for the 64th time this year. A two-run shot that ties the game at five. Career homer number 558. This game went to extras tied at four. Jeff Bagwell on second for Lance Berkman. Rips this one down the first baseline. Bagwell plates the go-ahead, and yes, the winning run as the Astros complete the sweep, their first sweep in San Francisco in 10 years. Barry Bonds, however, in the loss, did hit that home run, his 64th home run, part of a three-RBI day. San Francisco falls 
two and a half games back in both the NL West and wild card standings pending results of other games going on right now. And as things stand right now, Barry Bonds has two more home runs with 15 team games left than Mark McGuire did back in 1998. Bonds reaches the 64 home run mark in eight fewer games than McGuire needed back in 1998. Back to the wild card race. Don Baylor's Cubs two and a half games behind the Cardinals in that wild card race entering Thursday's game against the Reds. Rondell White a four for four day including this home run a home run and a two RBI Cubs up six nothing. It's six two two on two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Wilton Guerrero against Jeff Facero and suddenly we've got a one run ball game on Guerrero's first home run of the year. Next batter is Ken Griffey Jr. The tying run at the plate and Facero gets him swinging to end the ball game. So the Cubs hang on and pull within two games of the NL wild card leading Cardinals. And the Cubs gave up all those five runs in the ninth inning. Jason Bure gets the win his 11th of the season. As for the Cardinals, they're up large in Pittsburgh right now. Seven to one. Mark McGuire hit a solo shot as 25th in the third inning. Career homer number 579. Now seventh behind Frank Robinson for fourth place on the all-time list. Woody Williams in good stead there to pick up the win. It's raining in Philadelphia right now in the bottom of the fifth, so it is not yet an official game as the Braves are winning four to nothing right now, leading the Phillies by a mere one half a game in the National League East right now as the Braves are getting set to head to New York for a huge three-game set with the Mets over the weekend. The Tigers go down to Joe Mays and the Twins 3-0. Mays with a six-hit shutout. He is now 4-1 and one in his last five starts. Two of those starts coming against the Tigers. And one last score to tell you about later on on SportsCenter, which is coming up after the ball game. The game day crew, that's what we're going to be talking about. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit. It's a home game for them this weekend here at Bristol University. They're coming our way to discuss matters Big 12, Pac-10, and, of course, this game. Gamecocks up 10-7 at half. A recent survey indicated millions of American teenagers never touch alcohol. And that's great, absolutely great. But some teenagers do drink, and that's not great. So if you know any kids who drink, talk to them and listen to them. Because even one kid drinking is one too many. EA Sports. It's in the game. Rated E for everyone. We have got to cut cost, people. Ideas. We could open an account on FedEx.com, save 10% on online express shipping. Okay, how about this? We open an account on FedEx.com, we save 10% on online express shipping. That's really? That's that is one. You just said the same thing I said, only you did this. No, I did this. Makes all the difference. Bingo. That's good. Right on the nose. Sports Center in game. This halftime report is presented by Keystone Light. Always smooth, never bitter. And welcome back to Sports Center in game. Gamecocks 10 7 over the Bulldogs at halftime. One other college football game tonight postponed from Saturday. Rice visiting Nebraska. The Owls have knocked off a couple teams already, but those are Houston and Duke. Still, they say they're not intimidated by playing in Lincoln. So far, the Owls have dominated time of possession, but that is simply because Nebraska is scoring very, very quickly when they get the football. Eric Crouch, it's unfair when he finds Tracy Wistrom open. That was not ruled a fumble. It's a touchdown, Nebraska. Crouch, a couple of long runs already. Just five seconds into the second quarter already, it is 20 one nothing so Nebraska entering a five game part of the schedule here this game they got uh, Missouri Iowa State Baylor and Texas Tech before you know who comes calling 
Oklahoma. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something about Rice. They're 2-0 oh for the first time. Oh, excuse me. They were 2-0 oh for the first time <laughs> since 1991. It's a good payday for the school of 4,000 people. They get a lot of money for that nice private school. But that's it. Yeah, they're getting a decent payday, but they're getting they're getting a I few know. bruises to go along with it. You look at Nebraska right now. We had a chance to see them play their last game when they went up against Notre Dame. The difference right now, they're playing great defense, midseason form. Their offense, you're seeing them be a little bit more proactive with the offense, throwing the football down the field, trying to open up the running lanes as opposed to just running the football. If they continue that, they're going to be tough to stop on offense. Defense hadn't been tested. This is, no, is a Rice team that scored 15 points against Duke. The bigger defense, test comes so. against... Oklahoma when they should sure. certainly be undefeated when the Sooners come in in late October. Oklahoma, meanwhile, is off, and they have 21 days between games. They do have some tests before that game with Kansas State and Texas on the schedule. Long way to go for Oklahoma, and with such a big layoff, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Bob Stoops get his team together and have some scrimmages. Anything to try to keep this team in their game mode, because the last time we saw this team play on defense, they are dominating as good as any defense in the country, and the offense continues to come along with Nate Hibble, the quarterback. I think they're going to be fine, but I bet they're going to be scrimmaging more just because they have such a long layoff. They have to because I think Kansas State has the, exactly the kind of team that could beat Oklahoma and Norman. Play defense with Oklahoma, run the ball in ball possession, and kick it. And Bill Snyder will not be intimidated. I like Kansas State's chances in Norman. They're a pretty good football. Oh, they beat USC out there. They're a pretty good football I'm going to hold you to that one. I like I'm, that. I, will, right. I watch that. They're playing a good defense for sure. Speaking of teams in the Big 12, Texas takes on Houston this week. You know, some of the Cougars talking trash about Chris Sims. They saw him early last year before he improved. They'll see a, a different Sims now. That's on ESPN2 at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Shouldn't be talking noise, Kurt? No, they need to be quiet. Dana Dimmel's an aggressive coach. Maybe it's filtering down to his players. Virginia and Clemson begins the ESPN2 doubleheader at 545. Well, down in Starkville, Mississippi State took the kickoff. Dante Walker spots him to a seven-zip lead. After that, ten points for the Gamecocks, a missed Bulldog field goal. That's the story at half. Man, five hours of games. I got to grab a shower. Buffalo Wild Wings. You're up. People really like it here. Came in here hot water? All the essentials. 30 cent wings Tuesdays, 50 cent legs Wednesdays. If your employees operate heavy equipment or handle detailed information, they need steady hands and a clear mind. But if substance abuse is affecting your bottom line, you need the services of MEA Drug Testing Consortium. With numerous SAMHSA-approved collection sites statewide, MEA DTC offers prompt testing and timely test results. We'll even come to you. Steady hands, clear minds, productive employees. At MEA Drug Testing Consortium, we know when it comes to your business, drug testing is good business. Excellence is a Mississippi State tradition. The university is a national leader in using high-performance computing for design applications. Automotive engineering will be the focus of a new Center for Advanced Vehicular Systems. Students at Mississippi State get hands-on experience and win national honors in competition to design and build vehicles. And engineering students advise the high school team that won a national solar car race. In research, teaching, and outreach, Mississippi State Engineering is building for the future. The Southeastern Conference, a tradition of excellence. The SEC, celebrating 10 years of the Conference Championship Game. This is Sports Center in Game, the Keystone Light Halftime Report. And welcome back. A couple good ball games Saturday on the West Coast. Ohio State, UCLA, Big Ten still looking for their first non conference win against a ranked team, 0 4, but those games are on the road too early to start bashing. Get to that game in a second. But USC visits Oregon, very important early Pac 10 game. Oregon has Joey Harrington. Now, Joey Harrington last year against USC had 382 yards and four touchdowns. Joey just loves to see those USC Trojan uniforms. This is what he did 
and he's a terrific passer. And watch USC. They might blitz him, but they can't get to him. Now, Joey Harrington's a good quarterback, but Oregon will not be a national championship type program until they run the ball with Maurice Morris. As you said before last week, they got to run the ball to get the pressure off of Harrington. Yeah, you have to have some balance, yeah, balance. with that offense. And, and Maurice Morris, one of the best backs in the Pac-10, they have to be able to do that. They also need to play better defense because USC and Carson Palmer can score points. Ohio State, UCLA, people are looking at UCLA and thinking, boy, we thought we'd see big plays from both the running game with Deshaun Foster and the passing game with Corey Poss, but we haven't seen it from the passing game. Corey Poss has only completed 47% of his passes coming into this weekend. I think the reason has been the type of defenses they've been facing. This weekend, Ohio State's going to have to commit eight and nine men to the line of scrimmage at times to take away Deshaun Foster, meaning they're going to leave their corners one-on-one. -on -one. And that could be a big mistake because you see up those corners. Hey, I tell you, you that, yeah. Holly Dixon's this Holly tall. Holly Dixon 6'5 and oh. Tab Perry 6'4. They, they're going to go deep. Woo. They're going to try Holly to get Holly Dixon's deep. a giant. SEC fans looking in might wonder how you think Auburn is going to fare in the carry dome against a Syracuse team that really needs to get something going this year. You, you kind of like the orange banana? Well, I think if they don't shoot, shoot themselves in the foot for the 15th game in a row, they got a chance to win this <laughs> football game. They, time after time, will kill themselves. But playing at home with a great defense, and you look at Auburn coming in, very similar teams, the difference is they're playing at home in the carrier dome, and I think Syracuse will win. You know what they did at UCF last week? They turned the thermostat up. It was about 85 degrees in the dome, and it got poor Florida guys... Ran out of gas. I they Watch out. Heat. <laughs> Not that much. They turned the heat up. Florida guys couldn't handle it? No, they couldn't handle it. It was too right. stuffy in there. I'm telling you. Watch it. They'll do the same thing to Auburn. I'm not sure what the excuse is for <laughs> Mississippi know. State down on their home field in Starkville. The fumble sets up the touchdown from South Carolina's Andrew Pinnock blasting through the hole right there. And South Carolina at the break leads by three. The second half is coming up shortly. These days, you see a lot of funny beer commercials. This isn't one of them. See, this commercial is about underage drinking, which isn't funny. It's just illegal everywhere. So when we at Coors say 21 means 21, believe me, it's no joke. We'll wait for your business. Hey, don't walk like a cop, all right? You say you're serious about doing some good in the real world. Well, this is the place to learn. Even those sworn to protect... Please, get away from the girl! ...are human. What's wrong with street justice? Oh, I just let the animals wipe themselves out. God willing. Even those dedicated to keeping the peace... ...can cross the line. That's what I'm talking about. Denzel Washington. You think I'm crazy, right? Ethan Hawke. I think you're a rogue cop. Training Day. Boom. Rated R. Starts October 5th. When I was a kid, I was amazed they could put anybody on the moon. When I was in college, I learned that to build anything, it takes a great team. And now I'm a member of a crew that makes three and a half million pounds go straight up in the air. You and I may never ride on the shuttle, but the miracle is we're all moved by it anyway. Good burn endeavor. Coming. 200 years of learning. The University of South Carolina. The world is waiting. Copy you loud and clear. Well, ever since the summer, we had circled this Saturday as a rare home game for College Game. They hope you join us here in the studio. Our new start time this season is 10.30 Eastern time, the full 90 minutes before kickoff in Illinois and Louisville. Now, lots of stuff. We'll fill you in on what's going to happen here. Of course, the focus on Penn State and Wisconsin. Football is back. Fresno still very much for real. We haven't forgotten about them. Lee's saying 13-0. Exactly. The turnout, yeah, not so sure he's going to get the record or at least tie it. Paul Bryant's own for all those years because Wisconsin comes in at, at one and two. You think Joe's going to have to wait? Absolutely. Hey, Kirk, your Canes uh, have the week off, but the Knolls and the Gators on the road. Just a long way to go, my friend. <laughs> Should be fun. Join us for college game day at 1030 Eastern. The second half from Starkville coming up 10-7 Gamecocks with 30 minutes to play. South Mississippi, your ATV is as important as a good horse in the Old West. That's why Polaris ATVs are the choice for serious riders. You see, out here, mud and sand are around every corner. Trails have to be made where other ATVs can't go. Ground clearance is a must, and water to the all-new Polaris is what you drink after a long ride. Visit us at Jackson Polaris Sports I-55 South in South Jackson, where we'll double your warranties on some ATVs, even guarantee some parts for life. Only at Jackson Polaris in South Jackson. 
places never offer enough office furniture. So, nice chair for a rising executive. Come on, come on. You get what they want you to have. It's you, it's you. <laughs> but at Office Furniture USA, you'll always find furnishings and accessories that really are just right for you and your office. And it even comes in a box. <laughs> start there is a finish and in the journey between there are dreams the ncaa hall of champions keeps these dreams alive for you more than a museum the ncaa hall of champions takes you on an interactive journey relive some of the most inspirational moments in collegiate sports history and walk in the steps of a student athlete at the ncaa hall of champions you'll find something for every fan discover what it means to be a champion the journey begins inside Well, the South Carolina Gamecocks had some trouble making it here to their final destination in Starkville, Mississippi, but after a few adjustments and tinkering, they lead 10 to 7 after the first half of play. I'm Mark Jones along with Mike Gottfried and Jimmy Dykes down on the sidelines. South Carolina and Mississippi State both started off a little rusty, some penalties. If you're Mississippi State trailing, what kind of adjustments do you make? Well, they ran the ball well early, Mark, and then they since then they've averaged two yards per rushing play. And you see DeCenzo Miller right here with one of the better running, running plays they had. I think that Mississippi State will go to two tight ends in the second half. That balances South Carolina's defense up a little bit. So when they move the safety up, you got another tight end. So you pound the ball at him, and then Wayne Matkins better off of the run fake and bootlegging. So I look for two tight ends, run the ball, bootlegs by Wayne Matkin in the second half. All right, and uh, boy, you have to be at least a little bit surprised at the way that South Carolina has run the ball effectively against that tough Mississippi State defense. They really have done a good job against the eight-man front. Gamecock receiving. That's Brewer from his own end zone. Weaving his way out to the 26-yard line. And let's take a look at the first half statistics, the numbers that jump out off the page at you. The rushing yardage, 114, as Mike mentioned just a few moments ago, just 41 for Mississippi State. That's the big surprise of Mississippi State being outrushed. And then factor in the turnover, the fumble by Dante Walker, which led to the touchdown by South Carolina. That's the one so far, the one big one. First down and 10, South Carolina 2-0 coming into this game. Mississippi State hadn't played in 17 days. They came in 1-0. This is Brewer. As we mentioned earlier, tough going east-west against that Mississippi State speed. Hagan making the stop on the play. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes, who has more on the Bulldogs. Mark, I was in that Mississippi State locker room at halftime, and Jackie Sherrill was pretty simple in his approach with his kids. He did mention the word intensity about 12 times in a five-minute speech. He told his guys, somebody make us a play to win this game, and he said, look me in the eye. You will not come back in this locker room without a win, and out they went. Well, they came up inspired on that play, Jimmy. Davis in on the stop, along with Prather. Dorsett Davis last year played at 314 pounds. Mikey dropped, I'd say, all the way down to 295. <laughs> Diet. Third and ten. Petty, and it's ruled a catch at the 31-yard line, but it's short of the first down, coverage by Prather. Well, what Jimmy Dykes talked about, Jackie Sherrill got out of his defense. Let's see now when the change over in the punt, whether the offense treats it the same way. South Carolina just feeling their way in the first three plays. If the punt is deep. Bivens back deep. Ray Ray Bivens knee down at the 22-yard line. Mark, you and I were talking. I just get the feeling that South Carolina doesn't think State can go 80 yards against them. So it's a field position thinking by uh, Lou Holtz and the staff. We 
we'll see if that Mississippi State offense now gets into some kind of power running game. Last year, one of the most proficient running teams in the conference. First down and 10 for Mississippi State. Line up out of the eye. That's DeCenzo Miller gaining about three yards, brought down by Dennis Quinn, the defensive end. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Some of the key factors and plays in the game so far. Weaver with a 35-yard field goal to give South Carolina the lead. And the running game, the big story, especially number four, Pinnock, who has a 35-yard touchdown in the game. And then John Michael Marlin missing a 38-yarder that would have tied it at 10 apiece. And that's where we stand right now, 10-7. to Napkin will check down out of the backfield to Miller. He was pushed out of bounds at the 29-yard line. It'll be third down and about four to go, Mike. South Carolina, good tackling team, Mark. When you watch them play, I had them against Georgia Tech a couple weeks ago. They don't miss many tackles. And uh, you get in the open field against Desenzo Miller, you've got to be able to make a good tackle. Look at the defensive coordinator, Charlie Strong, whose defense has played well so far in this game, 34. And Andre Goodman is brought down at the 17-yard line. That is the first interception thrown by Madkin in over 110 passes. And the Gamecocks have great field position. Second turnover by State. And uh, try, Madkin was trying to get the ball to junk. Justin Jenkins, number eight, just throws it wildly. Threw it right to Andre Goodman. So South Carolina in business. Poorly thrown ball. Maybe his worst thrown pass of the night in a costly one. Gamecocks working with a short field on first and ten. One on one at the top. Two tight ends for South Carolina. Run it. Uh, into Watson. And he's got a first down at the six yard line. Talked about Mississippi State going to two tight ends and trying to balance up the defense. Now you get. Skip Holtz comes right out of the locker room and goes to two tight ends to try to balance up Mississippi State's defense where you get a helmet on a helmet and then you got a guy like Derek Watson running the football tough to bring down. Watson puts the ball on the six yard line. First and goal for South Carolina. Two tight ends backs out of the eye. It's Watson again this time stopped up by Nash who led the charge of Bulldog tacklers. Khalil Nash has made a lot of good plays against Skip Holt's uh, play calling. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Coach, you're exactly right. I talked to Skip Holt just prior to this possession. He said the biggest concern is they continue to bring the whole house at me. He said, as a result, I'm going to change up my offensive line scheme just a little bit. More gap protection out of my offensive line this second half. What does that mean for the offense ultimately, Mike? Again, you, you try to take a lot of the thought process out of the offensive line and just let them block down uh, so they don't get confused by all the movement and all the blitz. And there's Watson uh, being, you talked about him. He had leg cramps against Georgia last week and uh, missed a lot of playing time. And he, no doubt, is a pivotal cog in their offensive machinery. A good receiver as well as runner. Seven receptions for 35 yards coming into the game. It'll be second down and goal for Skip Holtz's offense from the Mississippi State nine-yard line. Two tight end offense. Brian Scott, the lone wide receiver, number 82, he made the touchdown catch against Georgia that really sealed that game. And they run it to Brewer. And he stopped up at the seven yard line. It'll be third down and goal to go. Dorset Davis making the stop. You know, when everybody fought against Georgia, that Skip Holtz and his dad Lou were setting up the field goal to win the game. They needed a field goal. They threw a pass to Scott Petty, hit him right on the money, and uh, it was a fight, but he won the fight. Brian Scott got in the end zone for the touchdown. Big target at 6 3. Big target, and let's see if they go to him here. 
Third down and goal. Scott split to the bottom of your screen. The left of Petty. Now in motion is Scott. They look his way. Well, well out of the grasp of him that time. And, and they brought him into the boundary in the short side of the field, motioned him out. They figured they they may get one on one coverage, but uh, Mississippi State watched the same Georgia tape, so they they, sure they knew he was going to be the object of the uh, Phil Petty's pass. One of the objectives of Jolie Dunn was not to give up the big pass play, and into attempt the field goal is Daniel Weaver. He's one for one, made one from 35. This one from 25. And he knocks it between the pipes. South Carolina leads by six points, much to the delight of the veteran head coach, Lou Holtz, the orchestrator, one of the greatest turnarounds in college football history last year. We know how you feel, and that's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Hey! Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money problems. My credit card debt was outrageous. Then I called Ameridad. They contacted my creditors and got my payments almost cut in half. Ameridad is a nonprofit organization that offers free consultations to consumers seeking to eliminate their debt. Every month I pay our credit card bills, but the balances never seem to get smaller. Ameridad got our interest rates reduced, and now the balances are dropping dramatically. Call 1-800-554-9000. Ameridad, helping America get out of debt. Here's your large pizza and free cheesy bread. Free? I, I didn't get you anything. Oh, that's okay. You... No, no, it's not okay. Oh, well, I... Free cheesy bread. That's great. Go. I uh, know it's not much, but it's dishwasher safe. Get a free order of Domino's delicious mozzarella and cheddar-covered cheesy bread when you call now and buy any large one-topping pizza for $9.99. Make it a meal with wings and a two-liter Coke. Get the door. It's Domino's. Hey, Steve. Tell me Miller Lake. Tell me Miller Lake. Tell me Miller Lake. Tell me Miller Lake. Tell us the remote. Hey, peanuts. Grab the unbreakable plastic bottle from Miller Lite. I'm such a klutz. I'm Dan. It's Miller time. I'm okay! We welcome you back to Thursday Night College Football, presented by Circuit City here on ESPN. 13-7, South Carolina leading Mississippi State with 10.38 to play in the third period. The Bulldogs now have done very well on kickoff returns so far tonight, taking the ball out to their 33 and 34. Addition to just one touchback. This is Walker. This one, a little more inauspicious. They have to start off on their own 20 yard line. Look at the last scoring drive, just five plays. Eclipsing 11 yards in a minute 40, set up by that Goodman interception. An Aaron throw by Madkin. Thought, thought that comes into my mind right now is you want to take the game out of Wayne Matkins' hands a little bit right now. Put it in Senzo Miller's hands or Dante Walker a little bit. See if they can get something going for you. And they run it between the tackles this time. It's the fullback, Justin Griffin, brought down by Island. If you're going to beat South Carolina, you got to, you can't make mistakes and beat yourself. Here, Dante Walker coughs up the first ball with Rashad Faison, and then pressure South Carolina, keeps pressuring Wayne Matkin, and then eventually he makes the mistake and throws the interception that leads to 10 points on turnovers. Game off of turnovers. The game top defense, Mike, has been the picture of opportunism. That's Dante Walker breaking a couple of tackles out to the 37-yard line. A 12-yard pickup and a first down. Island making the stop along with Faison. Walker breaking a tackle that time. That was his 
talking about the too tight in attack. If you had a too tight in attack, even though they brought the wide receiver in, somebody's going to be on number 11, Rashad Faison there, and he's not going to have that chance to, to make that tackle. But they brought Justin Jenkins back as a wide receiver. Actually, it's like having two tight ends. Lining up out of the eye. Nice hold for Dante Walker, who got out over the 40 before being tackled by Goodman. Now, Mark, I, I just said earlier, I would take the ball out of Wayne Matkins' hands, give it to my running back, but eventually Wayne Matkins is going to have to make a play for you off the play action because uh, Lou Holtz and Charlie Strong are not stupid. They're, they're going to get extra people up there to stop this running game. The safety's creeping up just a little bit. Second down and five. You see right now there's eight up there close to the line of scrimmage. Quick three-step drop and Matkin on the money that time out to the 44. Sheldon Brown making the tackle on the play. Pass complete to Jenkins. Shows you why he's an All-American. Four interceptions last season. Justin Jenkins, uh, he's covered like a blanket. He's running quick out. Sheldon Brown sees it, plants, gets right up, and makes a sure tackle. Again, a good tackling defensive team. Not making a lot of mistakes. Brown, a uh, starting right fielder on the baseball team coming up this year for South Carolina. Will probably be drafted by the pros as well. Third down and two, bright future for him. On the blitz, incomplete. Closest guy to the ball that time was the offensive tackle, Kenrick Fairchild. Fourth down, and the Bulldogs will punt. Goes back again, just Charlie Strong uh, trying to get his defense off to the sideline. You have to beat South Carolina. They're not going to beat themselves. Mike, Mississippi State has not converted on its last six third downs. We approach eight minutes to play in the period. Look with a high punt. Fielded by Brewer at the 15. South Carolina leading by six points after that 40-yard punt. We're going to take a break and come right back. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift too, so call now. Go, Brady, go! Sonny, use 1-800-COLLECT. That hurts! What hurts is not respecting the people you call collect, fool. Save them at least a buck or two, sucker! 1-800-COLLECT, I got it. It's easy. Use your head. Now, 1-800-COLLECT. One tool rack. 36 tools. Get the long handle tool rack from Rubbermaid. Breaker 1-9. I'll be at the Lone Star Motel. What room? Room 17. It started out as a simple prank. What is that? We had a little incident here last night. The victim was staying in room 17. Ripped his jaw. Clean off. But now, the joke... You really ought to get that fixed. Get what fixed? ...is on them. Your tail light. Go, 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 go! Come on! Joyride. Rated R. October 5th. College football Saturday. Louisville tackles Big Ten premier passer Kurt Kittner in Illinois. Louisville, Illinois, noon Saturday on ESPN. 13 to 7, South Carolina leading by six points. And on the field right now is the backup quarterback, number nine, Corey Jenkins, the 6'2 junior. And that's probably why they brought him in the ball game to run that play. I knew he wasn't going to throw the ball uh, the 15 yard line. He's going to run the ball and don't know if something's wrong with Phil Petty or uh, they just brought him in for a play. I'm sure Jimmy Dykes will be on that sideline. Find out for us as quick as he can. 
There's a look at Petty on the sidelines right now. Second down and five. So this might be a running series with, for Jacobs. Hand it off. That's Pinnock again. He has been a valuable cog in that offense. He gets the first down for the Gamecocks. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Jimmy, what's going on? Mark, I just talked to South Carolina trainer Rod Walters. He said, Phil Petty is fine. It's probably just another different look out of Skip Holtz getting Corey Jenkins in that ball game. This kid's an athlete. We talked about him this week on the phone with Skip. He said, I'd like to find him some opportunities to play in this game. Here he is. When you blitz, a lot of times the quarterback can make a lot of things happen for you. Because if you fake the Watson going one way and the blitz comes down hard, sometimes a quarterback can get outside of that. And Corey Jenkins looks to me like he's excited about being in there. He's got quick feet. He runs well. He led Garden City Junior College to a, a number one ranking. So uh, you, you've got to feel comfortable with him. We think things are moving pretty fast for him, too, because he's keeping up the speed. Second down and seven for the Gamecocks. Three receivers out to the top of your screen. And he keeps it again. Jenkins out near the first down at the 37-yard line. Josh Morgan making the tackle on the play. See, this is what a lot of teams are doing. Clemson with Woodrow, Dantzler, and uh, a lot of the quarterbacks they've become. Out of the shotgun, they become the extra running back. He's going to fake the ball to Andrew Pinnock, read it. Now he's get to, he gets the pulling guard coming on. And it's a Travell Wharton and uh, leads him up there. So you got an extra running back in the backfield. A nice little change of pace by Lou Holtz. He's run the ball four. This is his fourth attempt now. Gains a couple of yards. Four times for a total of 18 yards. Khalil Nash making the stop. What do you anticipate now is the counter move at Petty by Mississippi State? Well, I think State. Petty's going to go back. Oh, as far as Mississippi State, it's a change game for him. Now they got to count for one more runner. They don't worry about Phil Petty running football. He's not going to run off and leave anybody. He's a decent runner when I say decent. You know, he, he didn't get the job done. This guy looks like he can go the distance carrying the football. So now you got to you got to cut off a little of your blitz from now. Second down and eight for South Carolina. Clock running as we approach five and a half to play in the third. Puts a lot of air under that one. And it's incomplete, intended for number 15, Matt Thomas, underthrown just so slightly. If he throws that ball and a little bit more air on that, he's got a touchdown because Josh Morgan was beat by Matthew Thomas. Matthew Thomas right now is separated. He's separated right there. But he just underthrew the football and allowed Josh Morgan, Josh Morgan to come back and make the play. Third down and three for Corey Jenkins in a quarterback. And he faces a blitz, a little option package here. And he gets the South Carolina first down out into Mississippi State side of midfield. A 10-yard pickup. When you blitz, now Mark, this is really a nice move by South Carolina. When you blitz, you, you, you're used to blitzing. That's your whole style. In the SEC, there's not many teams running option football. So all of a sudden, Lou Holtz, Lou Holtz is probably calling the plays now because he loves the option. Tony Rice right. at uh, Notre Dame, uh, Minnesota, he ran the option. But when you run the option, you can't blitz because you can't have people running in man coverage and nobody at home in the secondary. Playing it a little more honest now. Flag down on the play. It's offside on uh, State. Banks making the stop on Corey Jenkins. Number nine, making Mississippi State defensively very much aware. And on edge. When Skip Holtz says he's going to try some new tricks, you got to believe him now. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a very good move. Defense, offsides, penalty is declined. Second down. Mississippi State has to change their whole game plan right now for this quarterback, Corey Jenkins. You can't just sell out your linebackers and be in man coverage right now. You've got to turn into zone coverage players now. He's run the ball, Mike, six times for 37 yards, all on this one series. Second and one. Keeps it again for the first down to the 36-yard line. They move the chains, and the clock keeps moving. South Carolina with a six-point lead. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. 
Mark and Coach, remember now, Joe Lee Dunn told us that South Carolina is not a drive-it-on-you, eat-up-the-clock type team. He also told us that Phil Petty, everybody on my defense can outrun Phil Petty. Now he's got a whole new set of problems right now with Corey Jenkins. they got a nice drive going. He's got a lot of problems right now, Jimmy. South Carolina with 174 yards rushing against one of the premier rush defenses in the country. Jenkins, incomplete, and a flag down in the end zone. Demetric Wright broke it up. I think that's going to be offensive interference. They're not afraid to throw it with no, Jenkins in and, there. And, but you have to to keep the defense a little bit honest that, so that you know he's just not going to a total run game. Offensive pass interference, 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, first down here. Mark, people at home, this is a complete change of what State has seen this entire football game. When you play man coverage, you turn your back to the football and you run with your man. When, when you play zone, you keep everything in front of you. Here's the interference right here. That's Matt Thomas. Quarterback draw right here, probably. First and 25 movement. It's going to be on Corey Alexander. For the ball was snapped, movement by the offense. Five yards, still first down. In the last two plays, the Gamecocks have been penalized 20 yards. First and 30. Look at all Mississippi State players on the field. They're all looking to Joe Lee Dunn. And right now maybe looking for answers to Corey Jenkins. Keeps it himself with room. Look at him go. Jenkins down to the 29-yard line. It'll set up third down. Check that. He picked up 27 yards. Three yards to go for the first down. When you have 12 days layoff, we talked about layoffs early in the game. You get time to put a new package in. If you had the regular six days, I don't know if you'd get time to put this in. Now, I'm sure they worked on it early in fall practice, but they have really caught State by surprise. Jenkins gets them right back into good field position. Third down and three. Two to go, they call it now, and Jenkins keeps it himself. Lunging forward, it's going to be close. Not sure that he got there. Clock running with 3.14 to go. That was second down. It'll be third down and short. Third and one. This perhaps one of the more definitive plays in the ballgame. Winning time. We've seen it before. And here they go again. With the same result, the first down out of bounds is Pinnock at the 17-yard line, Mike. That is four times. South Carolina's hurried up, and that's Florida State, Bobby Bowden uh, formation. They like that in the goal line where everybody sprints up and they get you outnumbered to one side and uh, rush the football. That's four times that play has been successful against State. On this drive, Mike, they have run the ball 11 times and thrown it just once. And they've eat up the third quarter. 236 left. Wow. First down and 10 for South Carolina. Backs lining up out of the eye this time. Brian Scott split wide to the bottom of your screen. It's Pinnock time. Down to the 15, stopped up by Ronnie Fields. Mark, I don't think you'll take a lot of chances down here. The sure pass or keep doing what you're doing because the way this game has flowed 
South Carolina's got to feel like their defense is in complete control of right. uh, Mississippi State's offense. So you want to come away with some points down here. For sure, three points. Now, if you want seven, but you don't want to take a lot of chances to get the seven. Weaver has been on the money picking field goals tonight, too. He's hit two of them. Second down and eight. And Jenkins keeps it himself in the middle of the field. Nash making the tackle as we go under two minutes to play in the third period. Now this is a tough call where Lou Holtz and Skip Holtz, you know, will try to come to some kind of an agreement. Do you take a chance here or do you set it up for the field goal? Well, Safe play or, uh, yeah, Pinnick's back in the ball game. He's not a good pass receiver out of the backfield, so I figure he's a block. He's going to block all the way. He's either going to be a run with a quarterback or they're going to try to get the ball to Brewer. This is the 15th play of the drive. Third down and seven for South Carolina. Jenkins keeps it. Puts his hat down but got stopped up. Short of the first down at the 11-yard line. Off the corner came Corey Banks with good run support. So they're playing for the three. They figure if they get the option then they get the first down, but they're going to kick this field goal. And Daniel Weaver. Poised and ready on the sideline to kick that field goal. Under a minute to play in the third period. It'll be fourth down, about five yards to go. As Corey Jenkins has been the story here in the third period. You ever seen a quarter go so fast? That was I mean, lightning All quick. these people in the stands here pulling for uh, Mississippi State wonder, did a magician come here and take over this third quarter because it's gone? <laughs> Corey Jenkins has really great. <laughs> he's a clip style. You know, you use the baseball analogy. There is a brand new pitcher in the game now. He's throwing a few curves, a little bit of gas, and Joe Lee Dunn is a little bit confused. We'll be back right after this. Fresh shipments of 2002 Acuras are arriving at North Park Acura now. I'm Dina Miller for North Park Acura, and right now every new Acura is sale price. All new 2002 Acura RSX. A month. 2002 Acura TL, 389 a month. 2002 Acura RL, 489 a month. Hurry in while selection is best. Cross the line to low prices. County Line. Come to North Park Acura, I-55 at County Line. No matter how great the plan or how cool the wireless phone, if you can't make a call when you need to, you'll hate it. Well, most wireless companies spend their time luring new customers, Cellular South is making sure their existing customers can get the calls they need by having the best coverage and clarity possible. Cellular South believes if you commit to them, they should commit to you. And you gotta love that. When you're on your own. H-O-R-S. And you know what happens after that. No pressure. No, no pressure. Don't let the ball hit in the head and get a concussion. I'll just shut up so I can shoot. Oh. No pressure. See, wait, wait, wait. All right, go ahead. You Double or nothing. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Oh! It's all up. It's a rookie. I can't believe I lost the stoop. Quarterback Corey Jenkins put his team in good field position, ready for this field goal now. They ran the ball 14 times on that last drive. He ran at 11 carries, 75 yards, a nice change up against a blitzing style defense, a man coverage defense. It's a, a brilliant move, really. Be, you don't like to play when you're a man coverage team where you turn your back all the time. You don't want to play against an option quarterback. And, just a complete surprise and a lot of confidence bringing him in on the 15-yard line. Your own 15-yard line. Move that took a lot of temerity by the head coach, Lou Holtz. Weaver from 28 yards out is now three for three. As South Carolina pulls ahead by nine points, 16 to seven. A 16-play, 74-yard drive that ate up over seven and a half minutes on the clock. The Wiley Fox, Lou Holtz, still with a few tricks up his sleeve. Yeah, and it's it's nice to have a package where you you can't be, uh, you know, you're a passing team, a wide open passing team, and all of a sudden you insert a 
package for your backup quarterback who's an option style quarterback and so it will give teams problem not as many problems as it's going to give Mississippi State because they're an all out sell, it, sell the farm defense have they nullified Mississippi State's pressure in essence yes now that, you may see Petty on the next series now 23 seconds to play in the third quarter folks ESPN college football prime time comes from the carrier dome in Syracuse Saturday 745 Eastern as Dwight Freeney and the Orangemen try to slow down the SEC's Auburn Tigers in a huge game for both teams albeit early in the season coverage begins with college game day scoreboard show at 7 Eastern time for more log on to ESPN.com Then it's to Dante Walker. Flag down, Walker down at the 23 yard line. This time, unlike times previously, where he veered off to the right, he went up the left side of the field to no avail. South Carolina has put a big silencer on this home crowd here at Scott Field. Holding on the return by the receiving team, 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. After long layoffs, Mike, you expect special teams to be a little ragged too? A little like ragged, this? but uh, you know, I think once they got back to it, we had some mistakes early. We said at the beginning, mistakes and turnovers. The turnovers for Mississippi State has just really uh, been the, the difference in this ball game. It's led to 10 South Carolina points. Atkin hands it off to the first man through the hole. <laughs> Justin Griffith, the fullback. Gains about four on the play. And that will be the end of the third period of South Carolina. Coming in at 2-0, looks to stay perfect on the season. A daunting task ahead for the Bulldogs, who trail 16-7 when we come back. ESPN College Game Day, presented by Discover Card. Now, 90 minutes. Smooth and refreshing as a mountain stream. Boy. Head for the mountains of Bush Beer. So log on to ESPN.com, keyword Discover Card, and enter your predictions. Win the chance to appear on January 1st with the hosts of College Game Day at the Rose Bowl and test your wits against the finest analytical college football minds known to man. They love me for my mind. Captain Game Day. Discover Card gets you on Game Day Challenge. ESPN.com, keyword, Discover Card. When I told my agent I was playing fantasy sports, he got the wrong idea. I like it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I would never do that. My fantasy league, unlike sports, is just good fun. I get the latest scores, player stats, even breaking news. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper, unlike us. There's some profoundly evil people walking the streets right now. I'm police! King Kong ain't got nothing on me! Boom! <laughs> Training Day, rated R, starts October 5th. Go, Brady, go! Sonny, use 1-800-COLLECT. That hurts. What hurts is not respecting the people you call collect, fool. Save them at least a buck or two, sucker. 1-800-COLLECT. I got it. It's easy. Use your head. Dial 1-800-COLLECT. This Craftmatic Model 2 electrically adjustable bed costs no more than many quality flatbeds. And when you buy selected ones with optional heat and built-in massage, you get this fabulous bonus. A 25-inch color TV absolutely free. In a Craftmatic bed, you adjust yourself into comfortable positions automatically. Call toll-free so we can mail you our adjustable bed catalog and a certificate for a free 25-inch color TV with bed purchase. Call toll-free 1-800-544-1000.
Welcome back to Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi. Kalimba Edwards, one of the key figures defensively for South Carolina. South Carolina's defense, the story of the game really in part, and part of the re reason why they lead 16 to seven. Second down and four for Mississippi State. Ball on their own 17 yard line. I'm Mark Jones along with Mike Gottfried. Jimmy Dykes down to the sidelines here at Scott Field. Play fake. Incomplete. Intended for Justin Jenkins. He actually had two receivers open on the play. Yeah, he had Terrell Grindle, number 15. I believe he chose the wrong receiver. As you watch this route down the field, it's a wheel route. And really, Grindle comes free here, and the corner kind of pulls off, and he decides to throw the wrong guy. Throws to Justin Jenkins. Atkin 12 of 18 for 100, 145 yards. This half was two of five. Completes this pass to the near side to Clarence Parker, his first reception of the game. Now, Mark, all the conversation we have with Sparky Woods, and he talked about I wouldn't trade Wayne Matkin. Everything really falls on Wayne Matkin's shoulder. You, you fall behind nine points, and uh, your offense has not moved the ball. There's a surprise move by South Carolina's got the defense off edge. The senior quarterback really has to come through now. He is the winningest quarterback in school history. 24 10 as a starter. He hands it off to fullback. Griffith, who carries three would be tacklers near the 40 yard line, breaking the tackle of Island for one. Justin Griffith, the fullback, was a wing T tailback in high school. And uh, the offensive coach has said he's as fast as any back we have on this football team. 14 yard pickup for the first down. 5'11", 231 pounds, pretty good load with 4'5 speed to boot. 37 pass receptions in uh, 1999. So he's got good hands too. First down and 10. <laughs> Incomplete intended for Parker. Well overthrown on that one. Let's take a look back at our ESPN game track. Some of the themes of the last quarter. Which are consistent with the game so far. Turnovers. Andre Goodman with an interception that set up a field goal for South Carolina. Then the South Carolina defense dominant in that period. And then Jenkins coming in and really changing the tempo and the complexion of the game with his running in the third quarter. Second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. Dante Walker gaining about three. It'll be third down, about seven to go. Not the kind of situation that you want to put Madkin no. in right now, Mike. No, and you have to credit South Carolina's defense. And we talked, uh, and you, you talked about the down guys, Stamper, Edwards, Langston Moore is an outstanding nose tackle. Dennis Quinn on the outside. This defensive line has won the battle here in the second half. Third down and seven. with time complete for the first down Justin Jenkins reached back to make a nice catch a nine yard pickup for the first down you're right nice concentration catch Donald Lee the tight end was open also so South Carolina going to more zone coverage Wayne Matkin just being patient on this drive first down and ten from near midfield Dante Walker over the left side, brought down by Kalimba Edwards. Walker running over Derek Thompson and Courtney Lee, and Edwards, really a great story from East Point, Georgia. His dad's a professor at the University of North Carolina, said that he wanted not to go to Georgia, wanted to get away from home a little bit, ended up going to South Carolina. He told him, he said, if you want to go to the SEC, the only two schools you can go to are South Carolina or Vanderbilt. Certainly made a good decision. Second down and four. Give us to the fullback Griffith that time. 
Shy of the first down. It'll be third down and short for the Bulldog offense. Griffith checks out of the ball game. Yeah, you think two downs here now. Especially this part of the yeah, field. Yeah, you're, you're thinking now I got two downs to make it. So I figure that you get the ball to your best running back here at Desenzo Miller. And uh, although they're opening up and showing like it's a passive situation. Jenkins who made the last reception split wide to the top of your screen and Wayne Matkin wants to come to the sidelines and talk this one over with the brain trust. We'll take a timeout too. Mississippi State trailing by nine when we come back. Question about direct TV? Yeah, I hear this thing gets like an insane amount of sports channels. <laughs> What's up? You're absolutely right, sir. With direct TV, you and your family can enjoy wonderful educational channels together. I'll let you guys talk. Here's the pitch. We know how you feel about DirecTV, and that's why you'll get DirecTV installed in two rooms with two receivers for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate. Circuit City, we're with you. Tommy, you know what mystery meat is? No, sir. Well, that's what's in those four depressed nuggets that you've got here. That's a pity, because you could be having KFC popcorn chicken, all white meat chicken, crunchy on the outside, juicy on the inside. KFC's Crispy Popcorn Chicken is back. Get an individual size for only $1.99 or a party size for $6.99. This is springy and spongy. Not worthy of a fine young man like yourself. Here you go, Tommy. Have a nice day. There's fast food, and then there's KFC. Hey, Steve. Tell me Miller Lite. Tell me Miller Lite. Tell me Miller Lite. Tell me Miller Lite. Toss me the remote. Hey, peanuts. Oh. Grab the unbreakable plastic bottle from Miller Lite. I'm such a klutz. I'm Dan. It's Miller time. I'm okay! ESPN's Thursday Night College Football is presented by Circuit City. We know how you feel. That's why we're here. Circuit City, we're with you. Mississippi State trailing. Madkin, it's been a story of two different halves for him. And this is the first time that he's taken his team into enemy territory in the second half. Out of the shotgun, third and three. Incomplete. Broken up by Andre Goodman. Fourth and three in the punting unit coming up. Great coverage by Andre Goodman. He's in great shape right here. Little hairpin route to the outside, but uh, Goodman was up for the challenge. Hook into punt for the Bulldogs. Brewer with a fair catch at the 15-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Mark, South Carolina's defensive coordinator, Charlie Strong, told us earlier this week the only blessing from that 0-11 season two years ago was the fact that we had the entire month of December off. We could evaluate what we were doing defensively. Coach Holtz walked into my office and he said, I want a more disruptive defense. That's the story of this game right now. Three of the teams they studied during that time, Memphis, Southern Miss, and Mississippi State. They stole a playbook, didn't they, Coach? They really did, and sometimes uh Imitation is the biggest flatter here. There is. And when you look at uh, what South Carolina's done, they've also had good recruiting. Dave Roberts is their lead recruiter at South Carolina. Go Petty back in. Yeah, back in the ball game, hands it off to Brewer. They were able to eat up a lot of clock on the last drive. Banks making the tackle. Brewer gaining about three on the play. Couldn't quite hit the corner. Mark Corey Jenkins uh, did his part. He's from Columbia, South Carolina. And in junior college, Bob Larson was his head football coach. And he talked about, he had a comment about him. He said he has that competitive nature that makes him, those around him, perform at a higher level. He did that tonight for South Carolina. Bob Larson, Garden City, proud of him. He ran out the clock and he put points on the board. His team with a nine point lead. Petty back in the game, hands it off to Alexander, who's brought down immediately at the 15-yard line by Josh Morgan. 
go back, Mark, to that third down play when they when they tried to throw the ball. I, I said before, thought that was four down right. territory. You, you're kind of fooling with the clock now as it gets South Carolina back on the field. I thought that was four down territory to draw the line of sand, but they have a lot of confidence in their defense to get the ball back. They're doing a chance right here on third down and 10 for South Carolina. They come with a little pressure. Incomplete intended for Matt Thomas who made a big play against Georgia to set up the game-winning touchdown but couldn't make the catch this time. Against Memphis, the kicking game, Memphis misfiring on the kicking game more so than Mississippi State. But if you ever need a kicking play here, a block kick or a big return, Mississippi State needs it right now. They won that Memphis game, turned it around with the kicking game. Over the last few years, that has been one of their signatures. Flag down on the play. Bivens makes the catch at his own 32. Ray Ray Bivens brought down at the 43. There's a flag down at the 11 yard line. Flag way on the 10 yard line, too. That may be offsetting penalties. Al Ford, the referee, went over at Mississippi State uh, in South Carolina, had a player tied up around the five yard line, out of bounds. So this may be offsetting penalties. I don't. Depends which way it goes, but there's a flag on the 11 yard line, which probably is holding on uh, South Carolina. Now that big penalty is the one on the sideline over there. Way out of bounds, it appeared to be. One way over here, right over there. On the 11 yard line, let's see right, let's see, well, about right over here. Let's see Looks if we good. can find it over there. Oh, right there it is. There it is. Oh, the zeros. Just keeps moving on you. Yeah, Holding exactly. on the kicking team. We have a personal foul on the receiving team. The penalties will offset. We'll replay fourth down. You talk about a big play. Now that's a big penalty. And in Mississippi State, again, the most penalized team in the SEC uh, going into this game. That neutralized them where you would back them up to the right. six or seven yard line to punt again. Now they get to punt again from the 15-yard line, 14-yard line. Bulldogs perhaps losing a little bit of poise. That's Bivens, who now moves up, stands on his own 38-yard line. Tyler punting from his own one. Had a 53-yarder last time, and this one will come back. We'll now they're gonna, again. they're gonna back him up five more because they're moving uh, South Carolina. So they're gonna back up five more yards. Gene Tyler will end up. A lot of times you'll get a punt team on their punt block team and they'll start jabbing, make a move like they're coming and then draw the offensive guys off. Although this is a long conference, they should have decided that if that was the call. I'm probably wrong on this call. He's going to get tired of punting. His leg might hurt. <laughs> Defense was in the neutral zone to cause the offense to break their three-point stance. Five-yard penalty, still four down. So he'll move it up to the six-yard line. When they jabbed, they jabbed them over the line of scrimmage. So that's why it came five this way. That's something that made Coach Cheryl too happy. And he hasn't been happy all night. See if they come after this one at all. They bring some heat. Dean gets off, went down to the 40. Bivens with a nice return, a late flag thrown near midfield. Bivens down at the 45-yard line after that 40-yard punt, a 15-yard return. Ray Ray Bivens, the special teams player, back after suffering an injury a couple weeks ago. One of the fastest players on that Bulldog team. Going to go against uh, Mississippi State. Back in the back by the receiving team. The 10 yard penalty. Part of the foul. Timeout. Last year it was South Carolina that came back with the miraculous comeback. This time it's going to be up to Mississippi State. We'll be back.
According to federal data, 1,142 people have died in Ford Explorer rollover crashes, with over 16,000 accidents in the U.S. alone. Certain Firestone tires and Ford Explorers have shown to be defective, causing tire separation, vehicle rollover, and serious personal injury. If you've been injured in a rollover crash involving a Ford Explorer, or Green Alpheer, or Firestone Wilderness AT tires, you may have legal rights to protect. Call for a free consultation. 1-800-585-9568. Super Saving Spectacular at Howard Miss Kelly Furniture, and there's no interest for half a year. The selection is incredible. Howard Miss Kelly Furniture saved me money. They have wonderful style at Howard Miss Kelly Furniture for about half of what you'd expect to pay. Store-wide savings on bedrooms from $399. Our sofa and love seat, both pieces now $499. Recliners, dining, home office, and more. Interest-free for six full months. Howard's has it price to go. You'll like our style. Football Saturday. Auburn takes on Big East Sackman Dwight Freeney and the Cuse. Auburn, Syracuse, 745 Saturday on ESPN. Mississippi State trailing by nine with the ball under 10 minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The Bulldogs have won 17 of their last 18 here at Scott Field. A big challenge ahead. Don't forget, coming up after the game, Sports Center, Rich Eisen, Dan Patrick. Tonight, spotlight on college football returning. Center stage, Barry Bonds gets a little bit closer to number 70. And big performers on and off the field. Atkin looking to make the play this time. All down to the 43. Tackled by Edwards. South Carolina just sitting back in zone coverage, making Wayne Atkin work. They're not going to give him the big long pass. He's not going to get that. So he's going to have to work the clock and work down the field. It's the old adage of letting the offense self-destruct, make mistakes, not go the distance. 50, 60, 70 yards drives. And Mississippi State has not been able to do that tonight. Tonight. We're going to work for South Carolina in the last game. Running between the tackles this time, DeCenzo Miller stopped up by Kalimba Edwards once again, a name that we have said time and again tonight. 6'6", 260, a senior, can play either down on the line or standing up as a linebacker. The guy that Charlie Strong will lose next year, but he'll make the most of his abilities this season with eight tackles tonight as Edwards. Nine tackles against Georgia two weeks ago. Third down and three for Mississippi State. Griffith stopped up initially. Short of the first down, Edwards once again filling. A defiant pulling by Edwards. They're trying to sneak Justin Griffith up in there now. Uh, Jackie Sherrill's going to take a time on. Think about this decision. With 8 14 left. Fourth down and about two to go. As Mississippi State has one timeout remaining compared to two for the Gamecocks. We'll take a timeout too and be right back. Wow. I know. She's gorgeous. Oh, dude, her candle went out. Oh, watch this. I saw this in a movie once. Want to get noticed? Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. That wasn't in the movie, was it? No. Hi, Fred. Looks like IT will be jumping through hoops again today. Fred, I sent out an email about the email being down. I opened that virus just like you told us not to. Hi, Fred. Uh, looks like another all-nighter. Sorry. 
At CDW, we understand what it can be like in IT. That's why you get computing solutions from your highly trained account manager and services designed to make your day a little easier. What's wrong, Fred? We're only asking the impossible. CDW, computing solutions built for business. To us, it's college football. But to the people of Texas A&M, it's a way of life. So you want to play quarterback, huh? Their stories, their lives. Sidelines, coming Thursday, October 4th to ESPN. I'm Dan Patrick. Coming up on SportsCenter, Barry looks to inch closer to the 70 mark at the expense of the Astros. When will the Broncos get another TD from TD? And the champ weighs in on last week's terrible events. At SportsCenter, coming up after the game. Big play here. Biggest play of the game for Mississippi State offensively. And they had a conference on the sideline. Joe Lee Dunn was in it. I'm sure he encouraged Jackie Sherrill to go for it. If you don't make it, our defense will try to get the ball right back. Gave it back to him the last two times. They'd rather not have to on fourth down and two. They'll throw. Complete to Brindle. First down, Mississippi State. South Carolina brought a lot of people that time. And they, I think South Carolina felt like it was going to be a play pass, but they wanted to make sure with the two backs in the backfield, they stopped the run, and they figured Andre Goodman would be all right on the island. Goodman already with a big play tonight, had an interception that set up a South Carolina score. First down and 10 for Mississippi State. There's play action. And it's incomplete in and out of the arms of Grindle, covered by Goodman. Looked like to me now, Mark, I don't know how you saw it, but it looked like he had a shot for this football. Now, Wayne Matt can put this ball right in there. I don't know if Andre Goodman got a hand on it or he got his hands around the ball. Let's take a close look at the takeoff route and see if he got his hand on it. Nope. Drop it. Catchable ball by Grindle. Second down and ten. He led the team in receptions a season ago. Back and incomplete and almost intercepted. Goodman again in on the coverage. Second down would have been a good time for a screen pass because South Carolina really rushing up the field. Now, I don't know on third down if you can afford to do a screen pass because you've got to pick up a big part of this 10 yards right here. So if you continue, to, if the chains move again, you get another first down, it come right back with a screen pass to slow this defensive line down a little bit and get the ball in Desenzo Miller's hands. Just one back behind Madkin. Clarence Parker has checked into the game along with the tight end Donald Lee. Atkin completes this pass for the first down to Grindle. Came right back to him. A pickup of 16 yards with seven and a half minutes to play. First and ten, Mississippi State. I believe Andre Goodman went for the interception right there on this play. As Grindle makes his move. Yes, he see overcommitted for the interception right here and allowed Grindle to make that play. Grindle's sixth catch of the evening for 80 yards. Now here would be a good screen call. First down and 10. Atkin through the hands of Sheldon Brown. And Sheldon Brown wishes he would have had that one back. Yeah, that, that ball was telegraphed uh, by Wade Mack, and he was eyeing his receiver, Clarence Parker, all the way. Sheldon Brown, uh, he's locked in. Sheldon Brown's locked in right now, his eyes to the quarterback on Clarence Parker, number one. He's going right for the interception. Second down and 10 now for Mississippi State. Through the arms of Parker, just out of his reach. Third down and 10. They've had their chances now on this drive. They've dropped two passes. 
now you got to think first down. You got to pick up the first down. Remember early in the ball game, Donald Lee made a catch over the middle. If they're playing a lot of zone, here's where you want your tight end. Where's he at lined up in here? Right on the left side, number 84. Donald Lee, let's see if he can get loose in zone coverage. Third down and 10 for Matkin. Little check down and it's ruled incomplete. Faison, the big hitter, knocked that one out of the arms of Justin Griffin. And it's fourth down and 10. The tight end Donald Lee on the last play. You figure you're going to get a lot of zone coverage down here. He's lined up on the left side. Number 84. He's going to work in zone coverage. Comes across. It's fairly open right there with the safety is back. Fourth and 10. They've got to get to the 22 yard line to keep this drive and their hopes alive. Incomplete, and the Gamecocks will take over on downs. He was looking the way of Brindle once again. Good effort by Jeremiah Garrison, the linebacker who South Carolina coaches are playing a little bit more because Kenny Harney's injured. So, uh, again, you move the ball, but when you get in scoring territory against South Carolina, a tough team to score a touchdown on. Garrison breaking that one up. You can't say enough tonight, Mike, about the Gamecock defense and going back to the Georgia game where they held the Bulldogs to nine points away from home. They hold Mississippi State to just seven so far tonight. And their secondary coach is John Gutekunst, who uh, used to be the head coach of Minnesota. Bill Petty doing his best Corey Jenkins impersonation. Keeping the ball that time, much to the chagrin of Jackie Sherrill, his team 17 and 1 in their last 18 games here at Scott Field. That number in jeopardy right now. It really is, and you, you, know, you go back, and uh, every team's had the same things to deal with, so you can't look at that as an excuse. They've had a little longer time in South Carolina, 17 days, but uh, they did not make the plays tonight to this point to beat a good South Carolina team. Mike, it's been a different game since the first drive first of the drive, ball game. The, uh, South Carolina weathered that drive, came right back, got the turnover and scored. Second and four, Alexander in motion. The give us to Pinnock, who's done yeoman duty tonight for the Gamecocks. And he gets the Gamecock first down and keeps the clock running, and in their possession is the ball. First down and 10. Let's take a look now at our Miller Lite storyline. South Carolina running the ball extremely well. 232 yards. Wow. And their defense holding Mississippi State to just 41 yards rushing in the first half. And they finally broke that streak of Matkin of passes without an interception. Pinnock keeping it on the ground for South Carolina into Mississippi State side of midfield. Mark, the game that South Carolina missed was Bowling Green, and I talked to Phil Villapiano. You remember him? Right. Great Bowling Green player. He played for the Oakland Raiders, and uh, he was in Mobile, Alabama the other day speaking uh, to the First and Ten Club, but he talked about Bowling Green. He really thought Bowling Green had a chance to beat uh, South Carolina, a, a pretty good Bowling Green team who beat Missouri early in the year, and I don't think they're going to make up that game. You know, things really don't get much easier speaking of scheduling especially for Mississippi State who plays the Florida Gators next week second down and four for South Carolina and this is Petty on the keeper makes the handoff to Pinnock I mentioned that Mississippi State plays Florida next week as for South Carolina Two big road wins, Mike, as they head home to take on Alabama yeah, you in the can't, next game. You can't get fat, but you look at Alabama, they're certainly probably going to be favored. Kentucky, they'll be favored at Arkansas. Arkansas struggling a little bit. Got, uh, then they get down to Tennessee, by in Florida and Clemson. They, 
so their biggest part of their schedule is at the end. But they've got a chance now. They they've already beaten Georgia, so they've moved up a rung to number three, and now they got to try to take out Tennessee or Florida. Who hopes with plenty of fire still in his belly? Pinnock on third down and two. As we approach four minutes to play in the fourth quarter, Ronnie Fields making the stop on that play. Mississippi State with just one timeout remaining as they burn it right now. South Carolina with two left. Trying to just run out the clock as Lou Holtz now. We'll be back in just a minute. When I wanted to start my own firm, she was there. When I wanted to buy out my partners, she was there. And when I finally wanted to retire, she was there. She's always been there for me. I want to make sure I'm always there for her. At Lincoln Financial Group, we offer clear, understandable estate planning solutions to help you protect and preserve the work of a lifetime. Lincoln Financial Group, clear solutions in a complex world. Corky Romano was a veterinarian <laughs> with a song in his heart. But on October 12th, to save his family, I'm going to put a wire on you. He'll have to Ow. infiltrate the FBI. I'm just a little wired. <laughs> as a jumpy. I don't mean the wire in my garage. Chris Kattan. Sorry. <laughs> Corky Romano. You guys want some cookies? We do PG-13. Discover the amazing training secrets of America's finest baseball school in an exciting instructional video. Baseball World's Defensive Drills video features professional scout and instructor Tommy Mansky and the same techniques that produced his back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back AAU National Championship teams. Collegiate Baseball Magazine's editor calls it a masterpiece, the best drill video ever produced. This video is endorsed by top professionals like superstar Fred McGriff. This is the instructional video that gets results. The Defensive Drills video benefits players of all ages and ability levels and makes a great gift too, so call now. 16-7, South Carolina getting set to punt. Our Mark Jones along with Mike Gottfried and Jimmy Dykes down on the sidelines. South Carolina's defense has dictated things for most of the game. Their offense doing just enough. And Bivens calls for the fair catch at the 12. Well, our question of the night was which SEC coach gets the most out of his team? And are you surprised at the answer? Probably I, not. I would disagree with that. And what's that? I really would. I, I don't know how you can put Steve Spear second to anything. You know, how Philip Former, or really, in the SEC, uh, you know, for uh, I think it's week to week, and the, Lou Holtz has done a great job. And I would say he's right up there among the top, but uh, don't tell me Steve Spear no. and Philip Former and. Tommy Tuberville and those guys don't get as much out of their teams. Little screen pass. This is Walker. Pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Just getting back to the results. I'm not arguing with the poll. I just everybody has their own opinion. <laughs> it's just that probably there's a perception out there that Spurrier has a lot of talent. And sometimes that works against the strategic side of some coaches, although you really shouldn't look at it that way. Some people do. You know, you're around the country, you look at great coaches Steve Spear obviously Lou Holtz is, is one of the great coaches in the country and Bill Snyder out of Kansas State uh, I mean they're all over the place the guys that uh, really perform well and get their teams to play their maximum that could down at the 24 yard line a pickup of seven on the play a look at the Winningest active coaches in NCAA D1 football. Jackie Sherrill, number four on the list, and Lou Holtz, number three. You know about those other two guys, too. Joe Paul looking yeah. for a big win this weekend. Come on, get some rest. Matkin, incomplete. It'll be second down and 10, intended for Parker. And when you go ahead again, the the leader is the head coach and uh, the assistant. So tonight, when you look at that sideline tonight, Lou Holtz is going to be proud of all his coaches because it's a when you have 110 players and a game plan, including everybody, the offense, Skip Holtz has to play the defense Charlie Strong. 
They got to play the special teams. And so it's it's a combined effort. You, so Lou, when you talk Lou Holtz or Steve Spur or Philip Fulmer, you're talking staffs. Good talent. And some good talent. Pass complete to Harold Lindsay. Bulldogs out of timeouts. We approach three minutes to play in the fourth quarter. They won 17 of the last 18 here at Scott Field, but trail by nine. Almost intercepted by number 33, Jeremiah Garrison, but caught by Harold Lindsay. A 13-yard pickup in a first down. Talk about Mississippi State. Now they've got they've got to go on the road and play that Florida team we were talking about, and then go back to back to Auburn. That can complete. Up near midfield is Dante Walker. Bulldogs in hurry-up mode right now. No choice, really. And this this western side of the SEC is really up for grabs. Now LSU probably has got the best talent. Uh, and, but they got a tough away schedule. A lot of the prognosticators picked the Tigers to win the SEC's Western Division with the Bulldogs at number two. Second and four. Incomplete. Intended for Justin Jenkins. Stops the clock with 2.03 to go in the fourth. And Lou, Lou Holtz is running up the sideline telling Charlie Strong, back, get back. <laughs> Move him back. Don't, don't, uh, let a receiver run by one of our defensive backs. But a great job coaching tonight. Uh, I thought the entire staff, they had a plan. They came in here, uh, withstood the first score and all the emotion. And then Phil Petty played well, played really well. And all of a sudden they moved the backup quarterback, Corey Jenkins, in the game and just kind of took the breath out of Mississippi State on defense. Sure did. That can try to breathe some more life into the offense. Might be a little too late. Complete to Bivens. What's up, man? What's up, man? You remember we talked about Melvin Page didn't play tonight. Uh, offensive right tackle was suspended. Didn't get in the I, best I know. Didn't get in the football game. So that patchwork offensive line did a real good job. They sure did. Bonding together under some difficult circumstances. First down and ten. And escaping. Steps out of bounds about three yards short of the first down at the 28 yard line. Folks, don't forget that immediately following the game, it'll be Sports Center with Rich Eisen and Dan Patrick. And we'll also have continuing coverage from Starkville, Mississippi on ESPN News. Mark, when you're on that sideline, like South Carolina sideline, you aren't celebrating right now. You don't think you, so? No, you still feel like, I mean, you got to play though. There's three zeros on that uh, clock up there. Couldn't blame backup quarterback Corey Jenkins for being a little excited at this point. It was a big part of their success in the third period. Second down and three. Pass complete. That's Lindsey. Down to the 18-yard line, another Mississippi State first down, a pickup of nine on the play. Here's where it gets tough. Now the field has shrunk. And so he's got, <laughs> you got 18 yards now in the end zone, so it's, uh, this is where South Carolina loves it. Where they are at their definitive best. Pass complete to Bivens. They're ruining it a catch at the 11-yard line. Second down and three for the Bulldogs. Pass complete to Jenkins, who's hit immediately. They'll, They'll give, give you that throw. throw. They'll give you that one. Guess Lou got through to Charlie Strong. The guys are backing up. Oh, well, they're back. They're going to guard the goal line. 40 seconds to go. The old story marked that uh, 
Bobby Cope used to coach for uh, Lou Holtz, and uh, Lou Holtz ran into him in the last a similar situation like this. He said, get, get them back, get them back. And Bobby Cope said, relax, coach. I, you've practiced this every day. So another play went by, and uh, they gained some yards. And he, Lou Holtz went by again and he said, I said, get them back, get them back. And he said, coach, relax, we've, we've practiced this. He said, listen, if they catch a pass over your defensive back, you're fired. Bobby Cope said, get back, get back. <laughs> a little different, a little different, different value. <laughs> and Charlie works. Strong said, get back. There's something definitely at stake there. First and goal. Touchdown Bulldogs, Lindsey. He was the favorite and main target of Matkin on this drive. So with 36 seconds to play, the extra point to come. Lou Holtz, not all that happy. No, that's why he can't relax. And uh, Matkin threaded that needle. And now your special teams onside kick return team is very, very important. Lou Holtz going over the, uh, the sideline with his special teams coach who he's got in there. You see that hands team, that so-called hands team up front. Not Michael Marlin with the extra point first though, and it's 16 to 14. The Bulldogs inching ever so closer. One more look at that touchdown catch by Lindsay. Wayne Matkin, the uh, senior quarterback, just threads the ball in front of Rashad Faison uh, for the touchdown. Lindsay, as I mentioned, making some key catches and conversions on that drive. A 14-play, 88-yard drive. Madkin, meanwhile, with a career high in completions and attempts. 27 of 46. Never thought I'd see him throw it that much. No. Not in this ball game. I thought they would be successful running the football. They worked. Uh, they had to put it all on his shoulders. Now, Mark, you get to the onside kick. And what you want, if you're Mississippi State, you'll put five, six, seven guys on this side of the football. And most of those players are going to go down and try to run interference and take out the front line. And there's two designated guys at Mississippi State that will go for the football. So they're going to try to knock out Ryan Brewer right here, number 83, trying to see who he is. That's Chavez Donnings. Okay, they'll try to take him out, and uh, those those guys, uh, they've got assignments to take them out, and somebody's assigned to go for the football right here. Harlan with the onside kick gets a good bounce. It was live for a while, but South Carolina recovers at Mississippi State's 47 yard line. Now, if you're ahead, this is the favorite play in your playbook. Kneel down? Yeah, kneel down. Know that one. Save the game. Lou Holtz is Congratulations team. to Lou Holtz and uh, his coaching staff and his football team. They came into a tough place to play and won. On a night when college football came back for the first time to our country after the horrific acts of September 11th and I don't think you can say enough about the atmosphere here at Scott Field in Starksville, Mississippi. Everybody warm, receptive, bonding in the name of civility, humanity, a real spirit of togetherness here. <laughs> Symbolic of what's happening around our great country. Mark, we pray for our service people and uh, the days ahead. Yep, credit to the coaching staff, respectively, and the players who sense and know that they are part of the bigger picture. And an important part in the psyche of the country at times. 16 to 14, the final score as South Carolina improves to 3-0 on the season. Mississippi State falling to 1-1 one one with a tough task ahead next week against Florida in Gainesville. Final score 16 to 14 for Mike Gottfried and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Mark Jones. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more on tonight's game, log on to ESPN.com, your home of college football. America, stay safe, stay strong. Right now, let's go to Rich Eisen and Dan Pack.
Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire. College football players return to game action for the first time since the attacks. We'll recap an emotional night and look ahead to this weekend. Even though there's a lot bigger things than what we're doing, a lot bigger things than athletics, we just, we, we just have to move on. Barry Bonds is already back in action, looking to move closer to 70 against the Astros. The Phillies have been moving closer to the top of the National League East, looking to sweep into the lead tonight against Atlanta. The Mets have made their move this week, both on and off the field.